All right, everybody, welcome to the November 9th Historic District Commission meeting. Uh, the board's actions in these matters have been deemed to be quasi-judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived. So I'm going to make introduction. Um, to my far right, we have Joanna Landis. Okay, and then Dan Brown. Good evening. Mr. Martin Ryan. Good evening. Vice Chair Reagan Ru Rudy. <laughs> Good <Sorry>. evening. <laughs> um, my name is John Wyckoff, the chair. We have Nick Cracknell, the assistant planner. Good evening. Um, City Council Member Rich Blaylock. Good evening. Margot Doring. Hello. David Adams. Good evening. And alternate Karen Bufar. Good evening. All righty. So um, we have administrative approvals. Um, we've been asked, uh, we have a little discussion that could go on on 179 Pleasant Street. So uh, we're going to pull that out. Um, maybe we should have that after the four. Are there any others people want to pull out? Um, yes. 111 State Street for me. Yeah. Okay. Any others? Okay, so we're going to pull out number three and number four. Um, Nick, you want to do one, two, and five? Yes. Uh, number one is 338 Middle Street, and it's a relatively simple request. Um, there's an existing garage uh, on the corner, on the side street of that lot, not on Middle Street, that has a... Uh, I believe it's a fiberglass door. They want to replace it with an, a new fiberglass door that has the um, the lights incorporated into the upper panels of that door. <clears throat> and I don't know if the applicant is here. Yes, somebody is here. So really it was just a question in my mind as to whether that glazing pattern was appropriate for this accessory structure. Has anybody got any opinion? Might as well keep going. Okay. Let me just put them on the screen here. All right. The second uh, request is for 50 uh, Newcastle Ave, I believe. Uh, you know, that's what? not showing up on the screen. It's not? Oh, sorry. Thank you. So 50 Newcastle Ave is a request to make eight miscellaneous changes to a previously approved project. This has also been constructed. All of these changes came out of the review from Vincent Hayes and the planning department doing the compliance check at the end of the construction. So I don't know if you want me to go through them, but they're all relatively minor changes, but there, there are eight of them on here from the corner boards to the the side porch columns are a little bit heavier. Vincent's pretty thorough in making sure everything is is caught in in that final review. The brick foundation veneer uh, w was not included, and I guess the explanation on the right hand side to the request explains why they they made the uh, field change. Where is that explanation? I don't know if Amy is in the audience who did the work or you are. Why don't you come forward and just announce yourself? Yeah, introduce yourself. Right here. Hey, uh, good evening. My name is Tim Lito. I'm the homeowner of 50 Newcastle Ave. Um, you said Vincent Hayes did a, I guess, a final review uh, a couple weeks back, went through each side elevation. Um, Again, the, that, that front face, um, you know, the original drawing that uh, Amy had put together, I guess included some things that weren't on the existing structure, the corner board being one of them. Yeah. Uh, as you can see in the original picture, it wasn't there uh, before, and so it's not there now, as well as the lattice uh, underneath the porch. The brick didn't carry over all the uh, under the porch, so basically those were two observations from Vincent that were on the drawing that were not on the house. That was that face. <clears throat> um, 
let's see, there, there's the, I don't know what the next one. Mm -hmm. There's the path side. Um, over here. Sorry, I'm looking for you the. You can instruct him where to go. Okay, sorry. So, the, so that's the front face. Those are the two uh, yeah. items. There's yeah. the path side where the clapboard came down, I guess, a little bit below uh, where it was in the original drawing, just kind of to map or match the grade. So just a slight deviation from where the clapboard was drawn in the original drawing to where it uh, came out on the actual build. Uh, again, f very uh, minor detail there. On the driveway side is where you reference the brick veneer. So the new addition uh, foundation has not been veneered yet. Uh, the desire is to just have that as an option if possible purely from a cost perspective. I don't think you can see it from any public way. Um, but if that is a problem or stipulation, you know, we're still willing to, uh, you know, veneer that in, the, in 2023, you know, kind of after the winter. That's that. And then the back, uh, the back face is the fourth, obviously, uh, face. Uh, there was going to be brick veneer on that foundation, uh, exposed foundation as well. And that is stone veneer to kind of go with the uh, patio that's that's in place there. It's kind of right below, right to the sides of the entry. It's kind of like a, a stone veneer entry. Again, not visible from from any place, but that is a difference. The initial drawing had brick, and the and the current build has stone. So those are the four sides and the four deviations. Yes, May Margo. I ask um, on the front elevations. Mm -hmm. um, there were shutters. Was there it, were. Was it planned that the shutters would be removed? It was. Okay, and the on the back elevation there appears to be a roof overhang um, over the between the second and third floor. Or Correct. The first yep. Second. I don't see that on the. I don't remember. I guess I'm having difficulty between proposed. Okay, so if, I see uh, it. Nope, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Actually, but that, you did bring up one point that is called out that the plans had two brackets on that uh, brow overhang, and uh, those brackets have not been installed. We like the simplistic uh, kind of view without them, so our desire is to keep them off as well. That was one change I forgot. Any other questions here? Um, this, I would just like to say I'm a little confused with the bricks. I'm looking at the driveway side, which I guess is the left proposed elevation. Certainly, yeah. Um, do the clapboard are the clapboards heading down all the way to grade, or are they? No, there's probably about I don't know, maybe two and a half feet of exposed foundation, and the existing, uh, you know, structure is brick. The addition obviously is yes. is concrete, so that's the piece in question. I suppose. So, as far as that window goes, where do where does the brick? Um, there's uh, a window in that back addition. At, at, in the basement, I assume. yes, uh, brick is below that for sure. Clapboard and the uh, baseboard is below the window on that side. So the clapboards. Um, are essentially at the level of the window sill. Nick, if you zoom in on that bottom right photo, yeah, you can kind of see, here. yeah. Or, or the middle <clears throat> at the bottom. Let me sort of see what he's talking about. Thank you. The middle okay. one shows the brick. Talking about. The right. Yeah. The one on the right. And you. This one on yep. the right. If you go, even. So That's just the farther. stone, right? That's the yeah, you'll see on the <coughs> very far right, on the right side of that window, there's some exposed poured concrete. Right here. Yep. Yeah. That's it. You have to. You have to speak from the microphone, or there won't. Or pick bring it, up. it. There's one portable one you can bring over. It's okay. You can. See. So, it jogs up on elevation there. So the window, as you can see, below the window is siding and the uh, baseboard. I guess, for lack of a better term. 
then there's a slight jog up on the grade side, and that's the piece you see there that has exposed foundation right there where your cursor is. So the that other is side where the is uh, stone, right? Is that right? That, yeah, this side. Yeah. Right. Stone is only right there on yeah. kind of either side of those back uh, that back door. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> that side piece of exposed foundation is where the ladder is. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> where the ladder is. That's also where the. Uh, um, AC condensers piece. are, which will have the um, privacy screen, I guess, around it. So, but yep. I know it's um, it's relatively minor, but you have to understand our, our point of view is um, oftentimes when somebody says they're going to put a, a brick veneer, a stone veneer, that makes a, a, de a difference in our decision if, if, if the rest of the uh, addition, for instance, is appropriate, and but some people are, I don't know, it's a little this or that, and we're going to have brick veneer instead of a concrete foundation. Certainly. In the Historic District Commission, it, it, it makes a, you know, it really does. It makes a difference, and um, we do, once we approve something like that, like to see it Sure. Completed. Um, yeah, we've cleaned up all the existing brick on the existing structure. So the front face and then the kind of the 30 foot runs on each side, it was all old paint. We've got rid of that and exposed the that. brick. And Yeah, that's a good thing. So, but it's that piece that we're talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any opinions here? How do we feel about this? Because um, this is an administrative approval. We could move on or not. I think most of these changes, in my opinion, are pretty minor. Yeah, I agree. Minor changes. And the brick veneer will happen when? I don't know. That was a TBD. We just said just it, have it. Yeah. His preference yeah. is not to do it. Yeah. I, I think it should be done. I'll, I'll just okay. add that it, this is on the paper street, correct? Mm -hmm. This is on the, the, the street, the walkway, other way it goes to Little Harbor School. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so it just kind of makes that one side of the, f the house very visible. Yep. You know, more that, like, oh, I'm very familiar with that path. That's mm -hmm. where I learned how to ride my bike. Um, sure. I understand the other side. The other side, no one's going to see unless you drive, unless you're visiting your house. Yep. Um, I'm only concerned about that other side, though, just because that's front and center. I agree. Yeah. Having this option was the preference. My wife wants the same thing, to be honest. Uh, so. If it's a strong opinion by you all to keep that and have it be done in 2023 after the winter, that's cool. With us. Okay. Both sides. Yeah. Both sides. Okay. Uh, sure. It's that's a small good. area, so might as well. There's not many square feet. Yeah. Uh, no, understood. All right. Well, it's now a stipulation. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. What else we got? We got one more before okay. we go and pull them out. Um, so the brick veneer will be retained as yeah. originally approved. Okay, so the, the next, the third item is one Congress. And one Congress, um, I think Tracy is here, but I'll give it a shot. And Tracy, you are here. There are, I think, 10 changes that are requested here. Um, many, I'm sure, are related to the program change. Uh, the fact that this is no longer a boutique hotel uh, on the ground floor and, and maybe it, the whole building was, I can't remember, but it's three different buildings, the new building and then the two existing buildings on Congress and High Street. It's now proposed to be a mixed-use building with ground floor uh, restaurant or retail commercial uses, second floor, I believe, or office, and the upper two floors, the floor and a half, the third and the attic, are proposed to be residentially used. There's still um, elevator access to the parking garage off Haven Court, and what's uh, changed here is there's no longer a need for a drive-through inside the building. Uh, so the street edge is a lot cleaner. Um, the other changes, there's an increase in height of 11 inches, as, as I understand it. It was largely driven by the need uh, to remove internal ramps that were needed for the elevator. So that it was an odd situation they were in and having a, a central core service all three buildings and uh, with the 11 inch or one foot shorter building, 
uh, they needed ramps inside the building on the hallways in order to make those transitions to the elevator work. So that will no longer be the case. It will be a, a flat hallway. Um, the uh, elevator overrun, the stair, the stair overrun, the roof appurtenances uh, have shifted a little bit to the rear. Um, they've adjusted the roof design slightly, uh, maybe partly because of the mechanicals, the roof appurtenances, and the fact that they have uh, added now where the solar arrays will be placed. They did talk about that and present it conceptually in the original approval. They've added sconce and wall lighting in this uh, request, and they removed three of the sloped windows in the roof along Haven Court. Um, and I wasn't sure how that was related to the trash room, but um, but maybe I read it wrong. And then they've added a door uh, along the Haven Court facade because Haven Court is considered a public place. It's required every 50 feet to have an accessible door. So there, there wasn't a door before, and there will be now. Uh, and they've made adjustments on the connector between the uh, historic buildings and the proposed building um, and gone from two single doors on High Street to one. I think, that, Tracy, you can add to that if I miss something. Hi, Tracy Kozak, Arc of Architects. At the public hearing where this project was approved, this, there was a stipulation to provide a materials board with samples, and so I brought that. <laughs> uh, that's my only additional comment. And then if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Is somebody uh, are you going to grab it? Is that something we could pass around or not? It's really heavy. It's really heavy. <laughs> I could put it on the table, maybe. Yeah, why don't sure. you put it on the you table? Should, yeah. Being careful of that microphone <laughs> in the middle, of course. Here. Oh boy. Yeah. Maybe I'll just. Nick, I'll show you closer. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, here. Um, so this is the terracotta. This is the main cladding of the building, second floor and third floor. It's a terracotta mm -hmm. tile. It has a matte finish. The uh -huh. color is sand. Uh, this is the slate roofing. It's a natural slate, uh, gray-green weathering by Vermont Slate. Uh, natural mill finished copper on the, we call them the little buttresses between the sloped roof sections. This is the main granite color on the first floor of the addition. It's a Carolina coral. The darker color below is the trim band at the very top and the window sills. This gray granite at top is for the restoration of the existing building on the corner on the first floor storefront. This is, um, it's actually a very narrow transom that goes above the storefront windows on the first floor. It is actually transparent um, and it's the dichroic film that changes color depending how you're looking at it and how the light is coming from behind it. Um, this is the composite a uh, metal panel that is on um, the roof appurtenances and there's a recessed uh, band of building between the upper house and the new addition that's set back. So just a few little details that are set back are the darker color. And I do have other colors of the terracotta if you don't like this. <laughs> but this is what we showed that's in the rendering. Thank you. That's a natural slate color, right? This is natural. It's a natural. It's, it's real slate. It's real slate. Yeah. It's the real deal. Yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of it on the building, but there's some. Okay. Thank you. David. Thank you. Um, I I don't. <clears throat> the siding for the second and third floor of the new building is that terracotta, but I didn't realize that it was cord. It is. When you come to the window openings, what happens with the cores? The, um, there, there are accessory details to turn the corner. You won't see the cut edges with the holes in it. I don't have a sample with me, but we could provide a detail. There's another material that goes up against the... It's made of the same material. It's this piece of the same clay or terracotta, but it's, it's just a vertical accessory. It's a corner piece. 
and you knows. glue it to it? They are attached with um, aluminum girts, like Z-clips, that attach uh, structurally to the metal framing behind it. And what holds them together to what holds them to the panels, the terracotta panels? Um, well, each piece is supported individually on its own Z-clip. So the terracotta panels aren't like glued to each other. It's, Got it. Yeah, there's a drainage plane behind it. So, so they're they're like two terracotta panels butted together. There's right, right, and uh, these these come in um, planks almost, and they're so they overlap, kind of shiplap, top to bottom. But when they go side to side, they're butt joint. And what makes that waterproof? It is not. It is not meant to be waterproof. It's a rain screen. So the water is assumed it will come behind, and there's a waterproof plane behind it with just you know, a little three-quarter inch gap to allow uh, the pressure of the water, hydraulic pressure, not to go into the wall by having that air gap. Um, the water drains down by gravity. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Pesky gravity again. Gravity. <laughs> I don't believe in it very much, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Question. Martin. Uh, Tracy, the the, uh, the very unusual product you have there that's very sparkly, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. What's what's the real purpose uh, for including that in this presentation? In this project, yep. in this design, it came from a reference of a play of light and how light changes as you move through the space, and it really started with the original um, medallions, the terracotta medallions on the existing building, that were um, opening and closing depending on the cardinal directions, east and west. So the lotus flowers and the medallions and the dormers are open facing east and they're closed facing west. So there is an idea about using the building. Um, kind of to orient yourself to, to your surroundings. Where's north? Where's south? Where's Market Square? Where is Gillies? Um, so by by using these features that change in the sunlight, this is where it came from. We're able to take a play on light, the same play on light, a new terp, a new way of using a play on light that already exists on the existing building, and it's it's just that tiny little trim band that goes above the storefront. So it's not you know, a major part of the building, but it's just that tiny little detail to bring that idea of how light changes as you move through a space back into this new addition. And it's, is it like a film that? Uh... It is. I actually, it looks a lot different. Um, I have another sample okay. shape. <clears throat> it's a little unusual, but it's on uh, top of the storefront. I think um, we all have to remember that our memorial bridge can change colors at the drop of a hat at this time and frequently does. So, like mylar almost. It is like a mylar. It's very refreshing. That's just the film, and it gets <laughs> laminated between two pieces of tempered glass. Oh, I'm sorry, Mara. Oh, that's okay. Um, Tracy, where you filled in where the drive through used to be? Yes. I to call it a drive through But um, it looks like there's a very large, solid panel of granite next to a door. I'm looking, Nick, at the very, I think it's the very, very last image. Uh, the one that shows, yeah, I'm zooming in on the middle bottom. Yes. No, that. So that's the trash chute. <laughs> the there trash. is a, uh, a fire stair and a trash chute behind the wall. And so at that particular location, we don't have the storefront. There is a, a single person door to one side that doesn't really show up in that view, but you'll see it in the elevation. Okay. And on the, I guess it's Haven Court, the court side. 
there it is. There's yep. there's a, also a similar sort of blank. That's the thing. same view on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, um, so that black square, the black square, what looks like a black square. Uh, no, I assume that was the entrance to the garage. Correct. To the right of the single door, there's also a bit of a blank space. Yes, that one. Yeah, that's the same area I was referencing. So there's a fire stair and a trash chute behind that wall. Mm, then I'm okay. I I see my mistake in looking at the two different views. Thank you. Anything else? Look at all the fingerprints. Yeah. Everybody good? Yeah. Thank you, Tracy. Don't go far. Um, do we want to vote on those three and then go to 111 State Street, which is also a project Tracy worked on? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, could I have a motion on administrative approvals one, two, and five? And Nick has stipulation. Yes, yeah. one. Um, so moved with the stipulation on 15 Newcastle Avenue that the brick veneer go up at some point next year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Okay, so those three. Okay, let's do 111 State Street. Uh, well, Tracy's here. And 111 State Street is, again, a previously approved project. There are, I believe, nine miscellaneous changes being requested. And again, once again, I'll, I'll try to quickly enumerate them and then Tracy can fill in the blanks. Um, I think her elevations are the best way to look at the changes. Uh, where they're all annotated there with lettering. Uh, there's a slight relocation for the the uh, elevator overrun towards the back of the building, um, which presumably is the Sheaf Street side, but it, it's not a shift to Sheaf Street. Uh, they've extended the porch uh, over the rear entrance, again, the Sheaf Street, Chapel Street intersection there, and added a post. The roof slope uh, has been adjusted uh, along Chapel Street. Um, I'm just going in order here uh, the, in the elevations. They've added copper gutters and downspouts to the building. They have uh, changed the three smaller third floor windows from casements to double hungs. Um, they've um, raised the gable roof on the new addition at the corner of Chapel and Chief Street by one foot. Uh, and they have shifted the location of the, the nano windows along uh, State Street on the corner building uh, further away from the door. And I think all the other views are the same changes just from another viewpoint, pretty much. But <coughs> Tracy, you want to fill in any blanks? Um, do we want to look at the renderings on? Yeah, I'll pull them up. Okay. Yeah. Do Hi, Tracy Kozak, <clears throat> of Architects. Uh, yes, so one clarification on the roofs facing Chapel Street. Um, yep, the section that clouded oval <laughs> to the right, the left part of it, that is the light gray color, on the previous plan, that was a flat roof, and it went straight across, and then when it got to the left, big flat roof area, there was like a vertical parapet wall. Um, we were not able to, when we got all the insulation and fire sprinklers and everything in structure all together, we were not able to meet headroom clearance for, for the egress corridor underneath that roof, so we're sloping it. So it attaches from the ridge on the right to the ridge on the left, so that's the difference there. The um, roof on the right, it, I do want to clarify, just to the right of that where the dormers are, uh, we are proposing that is the area that is raised one foot. So the existing roof um, would be removed and rebuilt at the same slope, the same pitch, just one foot higher. Again, the ceiling height in, that's existing in that part of the building is six foot two. Um, the minimum by code is seven foot six. So we're really struggling to get uh, the whole purpose of this addition is to get a safe fire stair out the back and we're not allowed to even build it if we don't have seven feet six in the egress corridor. So that's why we are um, proposing and hoping to be able to raise the roof so we can get that clear head clearance underneath the egress corridor. 
that connects the apartments in the front to the stair in the back. Um, the other, the four uh, ABCD revisions are what was requested and stipulated at our last uh, public hearing approval. Um, and <coughs> I think if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Dave. Oh, I'm sorry, David. Hmm? Um, in a couple of different images, you have this, uh, the corner building, the masonry corner building, um, appearing in different, in one case as brick, in, rendered as natural brick, and in another case rendered as a, a, a blue, kind of an if switch blue painted surface. Currently, it's, to my knowledge, it's black. Um, is, is this still in motion or is this going to settle down? An excellent question. Um, it's it's going to stay painted. It's going to stay painted. So that is um, the the renderings at the back of the package show the correct color of that brick. It's currently blue. We're going to keep it the same color. It was uh, black a year ago. It's been since painted blue. Uh, the bottom part at the street, of course, has that fake stone that's veneered onto it. And as we discussed, we will remove the fake veneer stone and not knowing what's left behind it, uh, repair the brick, uh, replace the brick, uh, install the new windows, and paint the The blue. required brickwork around the front facade is really what stimulates this question because if you're going to try to achieve a natural brick surface, then that puts you into the spin of, of somehow matching brick mortar joinery and all of that, whereas yeah. if it's going to be painted, the assumption is that you'll get as close as you can and then pull out the brushes. Yeah, we would leave it painted, mostly because it's been painted for so long, it can sometimes wreck your bricks to strip the paint off. So we feel it's safer to leave it painted. Well, thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Else? So I guess um, we could vote on this one. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Second. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Say. Aye. 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 Against? All right. So there you have that. Thanks. Okay. Last one. 179 Pleasant Street. Um, let me just pull it up. So Carla, I think, is here if need be, but uh, I'll do my best to be clear on what's being requested. My understanding from the application is that the um, Spanish black slate that was approved for the carriage house at the last public hearing for that portion of the project, which we'll call phase two for this, or maybe it's phase three with the, the annex being phase two uh, after the mansion. But the uh, carriage house and the connector was approved with this uh, tile, this slate tile. <laughs> and a sample was provided and it was approved what the applicants now requesting given there was a stipulation on both the mansion and the annex that was recently or is being rebuilt is that that stipulation uh, required the applicant to use a natural slate presumably matching similar uh, a similar color to what was on the building and profile so they're requesting that this uh, tile for the carriage house be the same tile that's used on the annex and the mansion. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I mean, basically, we brought. I have the sample again. Yeah, if, if you, you could. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. Yeah. So uh, basically, this was approved on the carriage house, but when we started with the mansion and annex, we weren't entirely sure if we were going to be using faux or real. And by the end of that process, it was determined we would use real slate. Okay. And by the time we got through the second. Thank you. <clears throat> Carla, that, that was the only request, correct? That was it. Yeah, yep. we had, uh, it, it, it has been seen and approved in phase two, but it was just, we just didn't have it in, in on the books for phase one. So, uh, Vincent, um, had uh, noted that, so we came back to get it approved. So it's a, it's a dark gray rather than a black slate. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yep. But it's a nicer profile. 
a very nice profile. Real thing. Or is it quarried? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I know that oh. <laughs> Dave had uh, sourced that, and um, he said yeah, that the uh, slate that's originally on there is not quarried anymore. <clears throat> that much he confirmed. But uh, he found Seven. this one. Seven. Yeah. Can we keep that? Sometimes Must have a. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to just keep it oh, in the yeah. office. It's a nice thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Could I have one too? Sure, he has more. <laughs> What's going on? Any favors? Not taking it home. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm happy to make a motion unless anybody has issues. No. Right, move that we approve this as presented. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Against. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So we have real slate. Um, so with that, I'm going to close the administrative approvals. So we move on to public hearings, old business. Um, we have a work session slash public hearing requested by One Rains Avenue LLC, 31 Rains LLC, and 203 Maplewood Avenue LLC owners for property located at One Rains Avenue, 31 Rains Avenue, and 203 Maplewood Avenue wherein permission is requested to allow the construction of a five-story mixed-use building and a five-story hotel as per plans on file in the planning department. Said properties are shown on assessor map 123, lot 14, map 123, lot 13, and map 123, lot 12, and lie within character district 4 in historic districts. So who here is to present this? Good evening, Carla Goodnight from CJ Thank Architects you. and Evan Cormie also from the development side. Um, we've been asked to formally request a work session um, because technically we are in the postponed uh, approval process, so we do need to formally uh, request that, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the um, protocol is after that, but then we'd like to join you at the table and, and run through the... Um, yeah. So this is just a work session, so we can, we'll go down. But it's a, she's requesting, a, I think you're requesting a work session before, if it goes well, before going back into a public hearing. Yes. To make some potential choices regarding the options you presented in the right. revised drawings, correct? Yes, yeah. and did we postpone to this meeting? Yes. So we would need to go back in and postpone again or make a decision anyway, I believe, right? We, yeah, finish the work session right. and decide what you're going to do. Okay. Right? All right. We well, go down. Yeah. Okay. Some introductions again. <laughs> uh, Carla Goodnight from CJ Architects. Uh, Eben Tormi from uh, XSS. XSS yeah. Hotels, yeah? Yeah, why don't you point it towards you? How's that? Is that better? And the rest right. of us will probably all right. Set. There we go. Is that working? Yes, go ahead. Okay. He'll tell us if it's not. All right. Uh, so, um, last time we met, uh, you had asked us to. Uh, look for ways to improve upon and unify and more uh, make the hotel design more exciting and add some interest and some elements also to the mixed use. 
So um, we've been working with um, the brand, uh, the um, hotel brand, and also been working um, on the, uh, some elements of the mixed use building to add additional glass features, additional brick features, additional canopy choices and so forth. So um, if you, uh, well, I'll just run you through our, our options presentation because we've um, started with the existing uh, design from the, the last <coughs> meeting, but then we're running through a series of options for windows and glazing and so forth. So just to refresh everyone's memory, the um, first page shows the original design for um, the Rains Ave mixed use building. And then on um, after 1.2, we have the original design that was submitted for the hotel. So just an overview of um, what the entry feature corners and um, side facing Market Street appeared to uh, be um, at that time. And then we have the enlarged views 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. And then moving on to. So these are, these are what we showed you last time. This is what right. we showed you last time, but we wanted to, to for go reference. Back and look at Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and 1.6 is the view from the water. So, okay. option A, we took a look at breaking the massing at the corner um, on Maplewood and on the Maplewood Ave corner between the higher and the lower massing, which it was all sort of connected before, which you, uh, I feel there was some objection to that. And then we also looked at eroding the corners um, on the mixed use for the balconies in those areas. And we also looked at the cornices, uh, I mean the canopies, but the canopies, um, I just did those at the end because it's easier to sort of compare them as a group. So on option A, you can see how opening up that corner has really separated those two structures and uh, reconciled that kind of bi-level masonry um, between the volume A and volume B. And then on 1.2, just taking that hard edge off the corner, I think is um, something that we considered uh, to be uh, more of a um, separation between the elevations. So that's pretty much our um, major changes there, <coughs> other than the canopies themselves, which we'll review at the, at the end with all the canopies. So this is option A, is there an option B? Well, option B, use. not on mixed use, okay. but mm -hmm. on um, the hotel, we concentrated a great deal of effort into uh, really bringing some glass features and elements into the entry because I, I, I think that seemed to be a um, something that, uh, you know, everyone was really interested in, in pursuing. So we also did a 24 inch cornice over the entry in this option B. Uh, we have the new vertical glazed wall system at the whole hotel entry only. And we've also uh, reverted in this option to a wood and metal canopy as opposed to the glass canopy that we had on the original. And then the metal band between the first and second floor remains here. And we've uh, retained or uh, expanded on the vertical window pattern. So this is really, this this option focuses mostly on the entryway um, and I think we weren't exactly sure whether we were looking, whether the entry was the primary concern of the board or whether it was really more, uh, you know, some of the other elevations. So this, we decided to provide an option focusing on entry. So that's option B. There was a, um opinion amongst most of the board I mm -hmm. remember and I felt that um, we wanted uh, more of a feeling of um, a little bit more of architecture mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. um, the hotel entry was certainly um, the place that uh, mm -hmm. seemed to be lacking at the time. Okay. So presenting the, this is um, option one. 
B. Yeah, B. B. So B, basically, we look at the cover page and summary, and then we go through larger, larger uh, images of all of the images on the cover page, and then we'll look at the next option. So uh, looking at this it gives you a, a larger view of the updated entry architecture, and then uh, you know less changes as we move around the building on 1.4 B. 1.5 B is essentially remains as it, as it was. And then in option C, um, we really move more of these details around the building where we bring that glass element and use it more liberally. We weren't sure you know, if that was going to be something that was appreciated or too much glass or uh, we weren't sure. So um, on this option, we did a, a higher cornice over the entry, took advantage of the 48 inch um, option there. Um, and we moved the, uh, applied the new vertical glazed wall system, uh, metal and glazing at the entry and the corner and uh, the mill pond view as well. Uh, we also added um, texture brick banding between the first and second floor, which carries around the, the building and then uh, retained the vertical window patterns for this option. And we added the gray um, brick at the base of the storefront wrapping all the way around. And we also added a gray brick massing where the massing steps down one floor. So if you look at 1.3C, <coughs> that is the uh, the new entry, which is very similar to the one that was there before, except we have the brick banding. <coughs> and then when you move to one point, uh, we've also uh, eliminated the frames, the additional frames around the windows. It just looks a little simpler and cleaner. And if you go to 1.4C, you really can see the impact of that glazing as it wraps around <coughs> the corner over 3S and then as it faces um, Mill Pond on 1.5C. And I especially like this brick um, textured brick uh, banding element that uh, you know, unifies the whole structure as you go around. I think that's a really nice, um, nice texture and, and it's at a, a proximity to pedestrian activity that, that would be really nice, I think, for that, for that building. So that's option C. Then moving into option D, uh, option D again lowers the cornice uh, slightly over the entry to be more in keeping with the I-beam structures below. So it sort of stacks up uh, with that same I-beam profile, which I think is, is a really nice balance for that. Um, uh, I was thinking the others might be a little bit high. Uh, and then uh, we're continuing the new vertical uh, glazed wall system at all three points, corner uh, right and left, and then keeping that textured brick and then uh, carrying a horizontal window pattern up sort of uh, along through the, through the uh, metal panels directly below the windows, and it carries that, um, that horizontal brick uh, banding that we've had, the little recessed bricks at the base that we've been carrying through the design basically, you know, for the last few meetings. And I think it's just nice to have it kind of echo up into the window pattern. Um, but we're also carrying the brick base at the storefront and the gray brick massing um, along the North Mill Pond. So you can see that in 1.3D. And 1.4D, again with that glazed corner, and uh, 1.5 I think is kind of gives you that whole effect across the mill pond. Um, so, and 1.6 uh, would shows you the the updates uh, from that location, and then we can talk about that, and then talk <coughs> about canopies because it's a yeah. lot to take. <laughs> yeah, you just dumped an awful lot. Of I, it did. Right I did. I yeah. did. So, so I, I think we should start with the that mixed was our use. Goal. 
That was our goal. Well, you did it. Okay, good. <laughs> the mixed-use building. Okay. And um, the changes that they've made. Uh, so who wants to start off here? And just okay. jump right in if you feel like it. It's a work session. Mm -hmm. Nobody's jumping. No, I mean, I, I, I see what you've done to attempt to try and break up the building and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and visually break up the massing, but it's, for me, it's not really enough of a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, just to clarify, because you didn't give us a view from the mill pond or coming down from Maplewood from the mill pond side, there were no changes no, to that corner. Not changed, no changes there. And I think um, my takeaway was that primarily that, that there seemed to be this in, uh, objection to how the two masses were meeting and the low one and the high one and, you know, that we needed a better definition between the two of them and um, that, you know, the uh, traditional uh, architectural details were not uh, not objectionable, but that they just really, you know, seem to not feel or work as separate looking buildings. So we really concentrated primarily on creating that volume separation where, you know, the the uh, three stories of brick above the storefront were isolated from the two stories above. Um, and that's really what our primary goal was there, was to really make that massing on that corner of, I think that was the most sort of bothersome, I think, was that that massing needed to really be separated on the corner of, um, you know, Maplewood and, and uh, Rains. Oh, Would you like that? I'm getting. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just making all kinds of noise. Anybody just feel free to... Mm -hmm. well, I would just simply say that I appreciate the efforts on the mixed-use building. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we're going to talk about mixed-use and then we're going to go in the hotel. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so your entrances are more better explained. Mm -hmm. and that's helpful. Mm -hmm. So I think you're moving in the right direction. Um, my biggest con is not the massing. Mm. Though you have improved it, mm -hmm. it was just the the cornice and the entrances that mm -hmm. if you had dialed those up a little bit, okay, um, that would have made the difference. Okay. And then I'll I'll, I'll save the comments because I, I know you're boxed in when it comes to the massing. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I don't like it, but you th there's no option for you. Mm. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm liking what I, I'm seeing. I'll hold off for the hotel portion of it. Is it the cornice specifically on the upper floors of the mixed use yes. at that? <clears throat> Excuse at the very me. top of the brick. So uh, maybe adding a, another a little more profile to that overhang to, to provide a little more a little depth more and shadow line articulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's that's very good and helpful that's feedback. The, the brick that we're talking about, not, no, the, at the, not at the, the upper level. At the, not the upper level. Oh, at Not the brick. At yeah, the, the brick. brick. At the brick. Okay, so the corners of the brick. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, is it because every one of these parts of the building has a flat roof and the cornice that's shown there is just reinforcing that? This is a flat slab. This is a flat slab like it's being made out of uh, Legos. Not so much. I don't, uh, most of our buildings in town are flat slabs in, in the inner city district uh, in the commercial section. So that doesn't bother me. It relates. Um, I just, I'm just looking for, a, a, there's not a lot happening in the body. Mm. So if we could do something at the base and at the cornice, mm -hmm. I, I think it would go a long way. Okay. I think what you've done with the corners is definitely a step in the right direction. I think it, Good. you know, it helps the massing, um, mm -hmm. breaks it up visually. Um, but I'll agree with Commissioner Ryan. I, th I do think the corners could use some more love and use a little more detail, or okay. um, just make the building pop more. 
We're thinking maybe mixed materials, um, like adding a, a cap or something that is not a masonry, because masonry has its limitations on extension. Mm -hmm. So maybe something like that would be good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Back during the federal period, we used to throw a balustrade on things to give them a little bit of texture at the corner line. Mm. Is that something? I'd have to say it. I mean, that, that that's pretty broad. It's not like it needs a balustrade. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. There's decks up there. And to say yeah. it, it works. Yeah. Right. So. We do have some railing details at the caps of the um, the, the uh, metal black air black areas, the dark areas. They yeah. played down so much. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they're not there. Mm -hmm. Also, to pursue this just for a moment, they are horizontal, mm -hmm. and all of these bland cornice lines mm -hmm. are horizontal. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know anything. I see what you mean on on one point one a. If you see that corner right there, the mm. angle is showing <clears throat> the balcony beyond just from that angle. But if something like that were brought further forward. It might be. It's the thing you could play with, I guess. Right. It's just seen. Why in that can't thing. we see the rails up there on the fourth floor? Um, they have to be 42 inches in height. They're for, set way back. They're set back mm -hmm. yeah, from the edge. From yeah. the edge. The right. railings are. Right. The one that you are seeing with the two people there in front of the door is because it's closer to the edge that you would see it. Mm. Carla, mm -hmm. taking this view, the corner view of um, Maplewood, mm -hmm. yes, the one we're looking at now, mm -hmm. if I were only looking at that one view, mm -hmm. and if the two rectangles on the far left, not the one you made smaller, mm -hmm. if those were made proportionately smaller, I would start to feel like you actually were changing the mass of this building. Mm -hmm. but those stick out so far and they're still so large that what you have reduced um, takes a step but doesn't totally accomplish mm -hmm. what I, I would look for. And as much as I would applaud that change, I'm still concerned with how this looks in the major entrance to the city, which is coming off of Maplewood Route 1, down over the bridge, mm -hmm. and you're seeing this whole thing from the mill pond side. Right now, you're lucky you've got some big trees hiding that corner, but once those trees are gone, that, that whole building is exposed, and it's not very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's very large, so I, I still can't get there. Mm -hmm. Just one point of clarification, not HDC, but as far as those trees, those are on a city-owned parcel. Those are not in, within our, mm. our our property. So mm. those, we wouldn't have anything to do with removing those trees right. at any time. However, there is no guarantee that they're going to stay there. And mm -hmm. I have to think about what does this look like if those get taken out in a hurricane, they get sick, you know, whatever it is. To clarify, <laughs> we weren't taking them out as part of this project. Got it. We would not be doing it. Anything with those trees? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with um, with the idea that it's the it's the view coming down Maplewood that yeah. you see that large, expansive building, and and yes, this the the part this three-story section that's really right at the street front mm -hmm. is so plain and kind of boring and I, I realize that we've pushed you in so many different ways and and yeah. in work sessions to make it simple and to make it you know uh, but if that section that's really the face of the main thoroughfare had a little bit more interest mm -hmm. I don't know if a cornice is going to really do it but um, making it putting some more effort into that building to, mm -hmm. to make it an interesting 
something that you see as you come into town. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that would differentiate it from the mass, the, this huge hulking mass behind it too. So it would potentially break it up a little bit more. Well, I think if you look at 1.6D, um, you know, we felt it was important to, I think in our work sessions, to really try to keep, you can see it there from there. So I think that we felt it was really important to make sure that we kept that three-story, um, you know, a, a, a butt to the to that whole corner sure. where you're coming. I mean, it wraps way back all the way around that entire area, and then it steps back for the fourth and fifth floor at that point um, <coughs> before it sort of hinges around and becomes the four-story sure. mass. So I'm not saying make it totally different so that yeah. it doesn't, but you know, maybe even the first floor experience, the entrance, mm -hmm. the facade, is something to make it yeah. you know, okay. have some more interest. I mean, it's so low now. I mean, it's so low that it almost wants to be traditional at that height. So but we'll you know, look at the, uh, we'll round the front it, floor. Open uh, it, it just stands out as three-story mm -hmm. um, apartment building there as you're coming into town. But if you could do something with the corner and the corners, that might be an idea. Transform the whole building into a series of lobed features. <laughs> well, realistically, on the Maplewood side, you could, you know, this what we're discussing is they could put kind of a bay on it similar to sort of a Beacon Street, Commonwealth Avenue sort of thing. And that would add interest. It would be a modern version of a bay. That would add interest without adding any height or anything um, mm -hmm. would make the, this, fr this front um, a little more traditional. And then as the building trails off going down Rains Avenue, obviously it's modern. You know. Yep. You know, I think. But is there anything you could do? I think what you're touching on is similar to where we arrived on the um, hotel piece with the gray at the back, where it steps down and almost really ha takes on a different identity. And that was less. We did that with the cornice, but it's not incredibly noticeable that the cornice changes from the back piece to the to the piece that is uh, along the street frontage. So um, my thought is that now that we have actually broken that massing, that brick Friendly. out, broke it free from the other side, we actually could put a, a more significantly different treatment on that entire piece because it does break free from uh, the other brick elements mm -hmm. all the way around now <laughs> on three sides instead of wrapping back in as it did um, on the original scheme. So uh, it could be broken out an as idea. another <laughs> bookend. Um, that could. You know, uh, the, uh, a, a brick building that's on the corner of State Street and, um, help me here, Nick, <laughs> what's the, the, um, the street by the uh, parking lot there that goes over to the new bank building, et cetera? Church, Fleet. Isn't church? Fleet. Church would be fleet. Where the alley dumps into the the one that was in the front. That was the original address of the building um, when we looked at it five or six years ago. Jen did the building. Oh. It has the wine bar in it. And it oh, it's oh, 77 State. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the bridge. Yeah, where the Exxon station was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> where the Exxon station was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that has some, you know, good Victorian details on it. That um, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're going to make this look Victorian. Yeah, I mean, I'm not an architect, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I just <clears throat> was trying to get past this, this mm -hmm. um, opinion that some people have of the plainness uh, mm -hmm. on Maplewood Avenue. Is is one of the things that was complained about? Not complained, but it, it brought up a number yeah. of times was the fact that this was an abrupt 
four stories from the surface of the building right up right along the waterfront mm -hmm. that there was no sense of of rising the building rising at this corner it was flip the switch on the lights are on yeah we started with one story going to four there uh, and and as i recall on the very corner on maplewood avenue that started out uh, that thing is currently now a three-story piece started mm -hmm. out as a one-story piece yes. or a big one story yeah. mm -hmm. um and but that was the only place that it occurred mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. seems always seemed a little contrary to me in as much as our streets typically streets in portsmouth the his street sidewalk and then building mm -hmm. and so the idea of ramping up in some manner from the street seemed wrong but from the waterfront we always had this imaginary park like and off in the distance this building will rise up mm -hmm. as the city in the, in the distance is it any of that that could help in this the transforming this wall this big wall because mm -hmm. one of the i think clearly one of the things that you're facing throughout all of this is this is outside of the model of most everything in portsmouth it's just so damn large mm. it's this is i mean i don't know what will be the tape measure the longest piece of building in town but it's pretty close mm. uh if that's if that's the demon in this whole thing that we're chasing that there's no sense of it Mm -hmm. fitting into the town it is creating the wall of the town right there <clears throat> well i think you know breaking it into as we talked about the smaller buildings the elements i think will um, assign different uh identities as you move across and i think that is that may help you you know view it as you know the components that it is because there is a a drive lane between the two. That's too bad with your option A that you didn't give us another picture of the back. So it's still the original. It's on 1.6D is up there um, is where it is. Yes, we did not uh, look at that because we basically concentrated. I was there staring the... at that too. <laughs> <laughs> we concentrate. Well, we did um, erode that balcony all the way to the left in on 1.6d we also did uh pull that corner so it, it is the same as the corner on the front that we showed you a close-up view of so that shortens that facade and um you know adds more depth to the flat uh, all the way to the left of that corner so um you know one thing david was talking about um mm -hmm. is not to have this look like um a large one you know this is one big building you do have a natural division there that I, mm -hmm. i'm seeing mm -hmm. on 1.6 d mm -hmm. is there some way that you could make a change um to change one section from another on the mill pond side even mm -hmm. i don't know windows or color or, yep yeah i think um, that's kind of where we're headed um, with that thought process for instance your uh, yeah. penthouse extends right across mm -hmm. and personally myself I'm, I'm not really in favor of the white on the penthouse but mm -hmm. you know that's me um, but it, it, it certainly connects the building mm -hmm. and I mean it would be a simple thing to change the color right there at that inside corner between mm -hmm. those or something I don't know just a thought the, the separation between the hotel and the we call the mixed-use building, um, I can see it is there. Mm -hmm. You can see that the window, the fenestration pattern changes to the spandrel form rather than the punch window form. Mm -hmm. um, but it, for the most part, it's relatively lost in terms of the composition. It looks like one huge building. Right. right. David, can I say something? You alluded yeah. to it <coughs> beginning. You move um, the yeah, let me, wait a minute. Here. Um, when you said something about looping, um, uh, why not, I know it's probably a huge input of time and energy, but you've got the smooth curve of the water, mm -hmm. why couldn't you somehow mirror that in parts of the building mm -hmm. to, as you talked about, that abruptness of the building going up, being softened mm -hmm. by having more... Uh, more curves than angles 
in some or all of each portion. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Com combining the, the rising from the waterfront with uh, Dan's uh, rounded sections. Mm -hmm. Why is it does is it required to be rectilinear? Mm -hmm. Is that is that is that needed? Is it needed? Is it it's not possible? I mean, anything's possible, right? <laughs> no, no, but in the fact, in, in as much as getting it done, is it a possibility? I think it's possible to look at elements yeah. that would soften the, you know, the, the lines. I mean, it's, you know, we can go back and forth between yeah. making it, um, you know, very purely rectilinear and simple <laughs> Or you know, starting. I want to make sh be careful that we don't start randomly introducing things that don't make a co are cohesive. Right. But sure, but that can, randomly but introducing approvals is also a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you did do uh, you did do it on Green Street, yeah. which is a bit of the. You remember uh, the top uh, couple floors that you, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, we jokingly called it a, a, a ship. Uh, Mm -hmm. superstructure mm -hmm. uh, up there mm -hmm. and um, it was effective I think on that building right We're looking for something okay it's all right um, can we more oh, I'm sorry you guys just... no um, I was just looking at the you know what you did with the decks um, there to break up the massing mm -hmm. um, would, would it be possible to cut that that corner window and do a deck there right where the um, you know right on the waterfront where it meets Maplewood Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. that would create more of a step mm -hmm. down right. um, to the street as yes. you came in the entrance of the city. Rather than have the balcony you would sort see, of in the middle of that facade. Right, like this you view, you would see erode that corner yep. as well. stairs on that side instead of yep. just a wall. I think I'm getting a really good signal of, you know, the part that seems to be, um, you know, is objectionable besides, you know, just adding some variation between the masses. Is that this last mass, as it hits Maplewood, just is too similar to the other masses that I'm seeing here? That it really maybe should take a lesson from the hotel, where we, you know, broke out an entirely different form that is still complementary because, you know, it still has the same program over there, so it's going to be doing that. <coughs> Maybe I know we do that. I know we're supposed to be focusing on the on the mixed use building, mm -hmm. but what you've done mm -hmm. in option D with the hotel, mm -hmm. I think if you can apply some of the same aesthetic mm -hmm. to what's going on at the mixed use building, mm -hmm. you're really going to help the situation because mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems, in addition to there being an over regularity of bays and fenestration and so on and so mm -hmm. on. Um, You've been trying to break up the building by moving those parts, making them smaller and bigger and smaller, mm -hmm. but they're still, they still look the same. Where what you've accomplished with option D is mm -hmm. you've broken up the hotel by actually breaking up the by design elements. By introducing that design yeah. element in yes. multiple locations. Right. Color. So you can, I mean, I'm not right. saying use yeah. the same design elements on the mixed use building, but use the yeah. same principle. Yes, I see um, what you mean. And then um, maybe by taking, with the hotel, you have the one corner element to the left of the entrance. It's a completely different corner. Mm -hmm. Maybe by applying, making a different corner to the corner that is seen as you cross the bridge in Ma from Maplewood, mm -hmm. and make that your signature element mm -hmm. for this building. I, I have been wanting to see, Carla, from you. Mm -hmm. You, you have a flair for something in your buildings, and it's it's one, usually one element here or there mm -hmm. that says, that's Carla's building. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen that on the, on the uh, mixed-use building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've been waiting for it and hoping that it would be that thing that people would drive into Portsmouth and go, God, remember that building? You know, just, just as you go across the bridge into town. Mm -hmm. And I just haven't seen that, and I know, I know <coughs> you do those so well. Mm. <laughs> Oh, flattery. Thank I you. Yeah, flattery. That. That'll, <laughs> that'll work. <laughs> I think you, you did such an amazing transformation of the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the C and D are, are just, I think, really well done. And I was a little disappointed that the mixed use building is still this mm. bunch of Lego squares. Right. I think we went pretty uh, straight up traditional on that. So, mm -hmm. well, well, I guess I wasn't aware that was as, as objectionable as it seems to be. So. <laughs> but all of a sudden, you know, with the hotel, mm. with your color choices, with your um, fourth floor, you mm -hmm. know, being dark and with that large entry and stuff, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the hotel, A, doesn't look as big, mm -hmm. B, mm -hmm. the front of it has a traditional modern take on mm -hmm. a Victorian four and a half story, five story mansard building, mm -hmm. you know, it, it you, you, but, but it's still modern, obviously, mm -hmm. you're not mm -hmm. trying to copy that and that's what's good. And, and by using these dark bricks around the corner and such, you've, you've essentially changed that bit of the hotel. And um, mm -hmm. it's just, I can see what Margot is talking about. It's being more successful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, right, right. We really played uh, up the channel. The whole trouble is that we've given you about six different ideas <laughs> here. We've cut the corners away. We've got, mm -hmm. you know, decks. We've got... Uh, John Wyckoff Bay windows on the front. <laughs> We've got uh, um, different style from the front section of the mixed use to the mm -hmm. back sections. And so we've given you an awful lot mm -hmm. that um, I'm afraid is going to require you to come back with this. Well, I think. Um, well, I think. No, <laughs> no, just listen. <laughs> I mean, I. I think that we were somewhat, uh, you know, under the impression that the the mixed use massing was really what was, you know, needed to be more modulated and more defined. Um, but you know, we can certainly move more further away from traditional uh, with that with some elements of that building, if that would be. So, if it is still a, I mean, you're calling issue. the mixed use traditional, and the way that you've done the hotel now, that's not traditional. I would say it's exactly opposite. Okay. I would say that the the mixed use is, um, you know, just, you know, looks modern. Mm. I mean, it looks mm. like a, you know, a, a, uh, mm -hmm. you know, something out of peas or something like that. Mm. that is okay. there, but. Um, Oh, it's just a little mixed up. Um, do we feel comfortable with moving on to the hotel? Everybody wants to move on to the hotel. Okay. Let's not forget just, the canopies as well. I would just add that whatever whatever you take from this, mm -hmm. that it goes all the way around mm -hmm. the mixed-use building that we don't oh, yes. end up with. Okay. Particularly the, the Maplewood approach. and Yes. And the, the Millpond side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Uh, do you want to do the canopies? We, we can. This is something just, new. Just something new. Well, let's just do the hotel. Yeah. We're going to do the hotel. Okay. Then we'll right. talk about it. It. It seemed, to me, it seems like we, it, the canopies are secondary to the conversation we just yeah. had on the mixed use and that we can mm -hmm. make a lot of progress there and the canopies will right. act, you know, mm -hmm. help that, but it, it, there's more to do than just look at those canopies. Right. So I think we... Okay. Where do we, let's see, we've got to go back to something, right? So we had B. 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 Going B. back to B. 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 Right. And again, this was, we weren't sure about the magnitude, uh, so we sort of did an increasing magnitude on the hotel. I would just jump in and say I like D. Okay. You like what? <laughs> Option D. Yeah, I should say jump to C and D. Okay. I think B was the right idea to the front. You should carry it all the way through to the back. I think that's what C and D does, right? Mm -hmm. Little changes in the front, but yep. Right. Um, so I think that's. Uh... <clears throat> but um, B doesn't. Have uh, B still has the uh, same brickwork right, all right. across the back. Right, that's what we don't like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas, Whereas, B. Whereas C, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think the difference between C and D, just to kind of clear things up, is the glazing. 
pattern and the elevated um, uh, cornice at the uh, at the entry. Otherwise, they are the same. So, if you look at um, 1.3C, you can see the windows are the same as the gray. Actually, let's not look at one point. <coughs> yeah, the elevated. Um, uh, cornice above where it says hotel signage on 1.3C and then if you go to 1.3D you can see that the glazing pattern changes and that we have just repeated the uh, the sort of I-beam metal composition at the top of the structure but it does get taller because of the hotel signage band. So. <coughs> So um, just to, to round that off again, D, the one thing that, that I see with D on that corner of the front mm. is that it doesn't have, there's more windows, is that right? On D? On D? Uh, no. Oh, wait, I'm nope. looking at C, excuse me, C. Right, C and D should have identical window openings with different glazing patterns. Within the vertical. Within the vertical, right. Vertical versus horizontal. Yeah. Um, oh, you know something? I'm at, I'm at the wrong corner right now. I'm looking ah. around by 3SR. Yeah. You're looking at four. Yes, I'm looking four. at this. Four. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the one thing about um, C is uh, um, on the front, the windows that are on the corner of the front, you seem to have white columns with white trim, I mean, around the windows. What's the story with that? I mean, that is just totally, it's, why is it that It sort of picks up on the hotel signage and just makes, uh, it, otherwise all metal it would be all identical, the same color, so. Yeah, previously that corner was more of that light yeah, metal panel, light. and so we, we darkened everything but sort of the frame around the window, but that's certainly something we could look at. Yeah. Yep, minimizing that. <clears throat> um, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that um, 1.4 and 1.5, mm -hmm. I think the C and D options have improved immensely over the B option, um, especially the 1.5 view, the view across the North Mill Pond. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is going to be a view that everyone sees as you drive into town off 95 down over the water um, from Bahinko Park. It's, yeah, that's going to be very visual. Now, before it looked like one big mass, one big IRS building. Mm -hmm. um, I think now what you've done is it looks way better. It looks broken up. Um, yeah, I, I, th I just think it's, a, it's head and shoulders above. Thank you. Uh, maybe 1.5 C and D is what we should be looking at for the glazing difference because <coughs> the and glazing. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just go in and say that I prefer C. Um, I noticed mm -hmm. the. D, you have the vertical and horizontal. Yes. Um, and that breaks it up. But I think the keeping the windows the same mm -hmm. does kind of, it, it's the same theme throughout. You know, it's not, it doesn't add to the massing. It just tells you that it's, it is one building. Right. And we could have make them all, make them all horizontal or we could make them all vertical. Yeah. I don't want it to make it look, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is about, you know, hor horizontal. Um, Muntins on windows or mm -hmm. horizontal divisions on windows. I just don't know why do I have this thing built into my brain for 50 years that I jealousy windows and porches. I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do. It's jealousy windows. It's it's old ranch house. I don't know why, but it just goes out. I don't know. So that's and that's, exactly that's what I like about it. <laughs> that's why you like Whoa. it because you've got jealousy windows. No, I just think it has that nice yeah. kind of retro. Um, vibe. Any other? Comments and opinions. We have got options here. Mm -hmm. I'll just say I appreciate how much effort you and time that you put into improving the design here. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that it shows it's a better design. It's got more interest. I think it's it works all all together a lot better. So. Um, yeah, I think, and what we basically have said is like takes take some of that time and effort and just put it into the other one as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think it's 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 definitely improved. Does I, it add your does it hit your pizzazz that you've been looking for? My pizzazz. 
don't have a possession. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I agree. I would agree with what Reagan's saying that that this has come a, like extra mile, and Good. I like the the brick um, the brick banding much better than just a metal band that just you see everywhere and it's, has no character. Um, my preference is C only because of the window configurations. Mm -hmm. uh, I think are far better than the than the the three the triple horizontal. Mm -hmm. Sort of window, um, and I, yeah, I think I think it's great. I, I would that gray box on the corner. I might put a relief between the uh, between the gray brick and the and the beige brick, mm -hmm. uh, just a slight separation because it's such a nice element in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, Other than just the offset. Yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. it's 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 very nice because it's very layered looking. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I could approve this tonight if we just uh, isn't there an expansion that. joint that they can put in for an offset? And have, have you seen that? More articulate than a, than a uh -huh. something more. Of a, <laughs> That's more only about this much, right? You know. No, it's more than that. Expansion. Yeah. More than that. I wouldn't ask you to accept an expansion mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> no, it's a recess. Mm -hmm. and just jump in, anybody. Okay. Good job. Everybody's Everybody's consensus is C. Everybody's burnt Everybody's out. Everybody's no, C. Jumped. jumped. Yeah. Good job. <clears throat> All right, then I will keep, I know this is your second meeting this month, so I will keep it moving on to 1.7 the canopies uh, 1.70 uh, represents the glass and steel canopies that we were looking at on Maplewood Ave and Rains Ave and then the hotel front canopy from the previous submittal and if you look at 1.71 um, we've looked at some more um, massive uh, metal with tie backs uh, we have not proposed a uh, changes to the Rains Ave um, entrance canopy and then we've also looked at the uh, hotel canopy having more of a warm wood um, underneath uh, there for the hotel entrance instead of the, the glazed <coughs> so I guess we have glass that 1.71 is good because it has all three glass iron and wood um, as potential uh, ways of executing the uh, entrance canopies um, and they could go on either structure or uh, multiple locations um, I guess my question for you would be uh, would we want to split uh, one type of canopy on one building and another uh, or would we do a hierarchy or is there any of these that you don't like that we can rule out which would be helpful um, I, I would say uh, you know I hate to jump in first does anybody else want to okay um, I, I mean I really appreciate the wood underneath on the hotel um, I would say that you don't want these canopies to match we okay. we don't want these two buildings to yeah to right. essentially i know that these are your buildings mm -hmm. okay i realize that but we don't want them to be this is your corner here you know right. i mean i would think that we want to see variety. some difference some variety, variety okay. in these buildings and i think that's what we were trying to do with this yes. option here was last option right previously we had sort of dressed them all up but dressed them all up alike with Similar the glass with the and the glass. steel and so yeah. providing mm -hmm. some variations on canopies yeah. i i would say the of, of the ones you've presented the rains avenue canopy with the glass mm -hmm. on top it i don't think it has the weight that mm. you need for this building mm -hmm. um and while i'm thinking about it when when we see the mixed-use building again, could we have some different options versus the white at the top that I think John mm -hmm. mentioned? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. 
David, do you like any of these canopies? Uh, they're all alien to me, so I, I don't I don't get it. Um, I, I, don't, I don't understand why they need to be so rectilinear. I don't. They don't seem to be have any spirit to them. Uh, I, maybe they're too big to have shapes, but but uh, you know. Okay. I like the glass metal angled one. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. I this actually one like that one. Oh, oh, oh. Really the old one. The old hotel camera. Yep. Yeah. The old hotel camera. Right on 1.70 far yeah, right. Yeah. That's sort of yep. the. Yep. That, but, uh, I, but I agree that they should probably be different. Bracket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we if we like the wood on the hotel and that mass, then mm -hmm. this is a better option somewhere else on the mixed, mixed use yeah. building. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. I'm the only one who said he liked the wood. So. Yeah. I don't know. I saw some <laughs> not, people nodding when you said it. Oh, we got some well, nods. No, it's, I think you're right about that. It, 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 at least it's not more mm. anodized metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know. I'm old. <laughs> I probably built 40 hoods over doors, different kinds, mm -hmm. all different kinds. I don't think I did the same one twice. Um, I didn't have the challenges that you have, mm -hmm. but none of them were as plain as this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None of them. No. All right, so we're looking for variety. I don't think anybody would hire David Adams to build no, you, no, anything you got that it. looks you, like You've got it. Yeah. You've got it. And so we are. We're out of our element. element I, 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 I've never built anything like this. Just, either. but, but wouldn't? I mean, I don't know. Seems like things buy and sell pretty rapidly downtown. That that maybe. I don't think it was all a mistake. I guess. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Yes, Martin. Uh, I, you know, I just say that. You know, I don't find. I, I think they need to go like a little extra mile with the detail, but I mm -hmm. find the glass more interesting only because typically these canopies, they, you know, it, it juts out, it's, it's got a tar, sloppy tar roof, and the glass, you know, at least reveals what's going on with the building. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't hide any, you can't just mock up a, a construction. It mm -hmm. has to be very articulate. It's got to be mm -hmm. well detailed. All the bolts have to look good and you know all the connections and the and the weldings have to look good and sculptural and so i can appreciate that i i prefer them to be more transparent and sculptural and and uh, mm -hmm. to me the building's so massive that these delicate glass pieces really add to the mm -hmm. the character of the building now when you look on the rains avenue on the multi-purpose uh building you have a you have a big thick canopy and then a little thin canopy. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they? I, I I think it would be better if they sort of had a little bit of a relationship. Yes. Uh, some sort of dialogue so, uh, between them and siblings. scale and massing yeah. and things. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. That's my two cents. Okay. Okay. So moving right along. <laughs> um, I, I hope you've been. You know, writing down. Ah, ah, no, no. God, As you know, it's all recorded. It's all recorded. <laughs> right. I'm taking notes. Yeah, yeah. I know it. So, uh, unless anybody else has got another opinion they want to go, uh, I'm going to ask the, for the public and then close this um, work session. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody in the public uh, want to speak about this project? Like a bad penny, I keep coming back. No, that's Elizabeth quite Bratter, right. property owner, 159 McDonough Street. Nick, can you please bring up, I think it's 1D. It's a picture of the hotel, and then you see how it goes down. Oh, stop. Um, go back into D. Keep going into D. There you are. One more. That's it. Oh, back up. Corner. 1.4, the corner. So, um, I first want to compliment Carla and her team for finally coming up with something that's a little bit interesting. But what I wanted to point out, which is easier to see when you're on your own computer, is how much nicer the new brick, I call it bricker brick because I don't have a, a, a background in, in mm -hmm. architecture, but 
If you look at the cement, is what I'm going to call it, on the mixed-use building, I would love to see that cement line, that banding go around, be turned into either a gray or, um, or a dark gray, black, or the same color brick as is on this building to have it kind of go down so there is something that connects them but not something that's massive and connects them. So just that, I just personally don't care for that white cement looking stuff. And I think it makes the mixed use building just scream, I'm so big you need to look how large I am. So that's one suggestion. So the other suggestion would be on the entrances, if you can flip to the next one, Nick, that has the entrance. Uh, we're in D, that's fine. So. With the ones that have canopies, this one doesn't have it. But again, you can see when you look behind the building and you look at the mixed use, you can see all that white sticking out, which makes that whole building put your eyes on how huge it is. So in regards to the windows, um, I would like to see those horizontal windows be on the top floor and the vertical ones underneath. So mixing C and D. And the reason why is because those horizontal windows make that top look smaller to me. When I look at C and I see the vertical windows, that top looks higher. Um, so that was that. Um, can we go to the corners, Nick, um, the, um, on, the, on the hotel? So you've got to go up to the white, but it's going to be that one. Stop. So those white um, trim things on the middle, which are kind of leftovers from the white that was there. I think they should go away and be black, but the white trim around the windows themselves, I think is appealing because it kind of separates that out a little <coughs> bit. So the little thin white on the outside I like, but the inner big white I don't like. And that I thought would look good. Can you go to the mixed use, please? To the balcony. So that little bit of white, I think, would give some kind of interest to those balconies that were added. I like that the balconies kind of break that up, but to give them a little something that they just, mm. the balconies just look, it helps, but it, they need something, in my opinion. But again, that white banding, when you look at that building, that white banding is what makes it look so huge. And the same thing with the white on top, which you guys already brought up. So let me see if I have anything else. The white trim on the corners, the brick base, the cornices, the upper story with the windows. Anyway, and I agree with everything everybody else said because they, they are all points that needed to be made. Um, and I do want to thank you for introducing three different choices, at least on the hotel. It is a significant improvement mm -hmm. over what was there before. Thank you. All righty. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Duncan McCallum, 536 State Street, and I'm here to speak in opposition to this project. Um, basically, the thrust of it is, is it's just too massive and it's totally out of character with the uh, historic district of the downtown area. Now, the reason why you haven't had more um, spirited and vocal public opposition to this project is that we all thought that these uh, proceedings had been stayed way by, by the court way back in, uh, way back in February. And I was right in the middle of it, uh, so I know whereof I speak. The sequence of events was that on December 16th of last year, the planning board granted site plan approval for the project. I filed a motion for reconsideration and rehearing on it with the planning board. The planning board granted my motion on, on, uh, on January 27th of this year and set it down for hearing in mid-February. Mid, uh, but before the planning board could conduct its rehearing, the developers uh, in both this project and the 53 Green Street project filed lawsuits in the Rockingham Superior Court and obtained a stay of proceedings. Uh, my, understa my understanding, and I do remember it vividly, is that one of the other projects, I don't know whether it was this one or 53 Green Street, but it was set down for a, a, uh, for a hearing uh, before the ZBA 
and uh, I got word uh, and uh, by agreement of the parties because of the lawsuit that the developers filed, we all agreed to take uh, everything off pending the outcome of the lawsuits. And uh, we, uh, you know, I agreed to a stay of all proceedings. And I thought everybody understood that that was a stay of all land use board proceedings, including this one. Uh, however, uh, eventually uh, it came to my attention um, some of my uh, fellow uh, educators and anarchists and revolutionaries said, hey, I thought there was a stay of proceedings. Uh, they're, continuing, they're continuing to hold hearings before the, uh, before the HDC. And I said, well, yeah, that is my understanding. Uh, I thought the stay of proceedings applied to everybody. And uh, so eventually I brought it to the city attorney's uh, attention. And uh, sure enough, they sided with me. I'm sure you'll all remember the, uh, the hearing that was kind of canceled at the last minute uh, in August or, uh, August or September. Uh, and it was for that reason. So that's why you haven't heard more output, uh, <clears throat> more feedback from the public on this matter. Yeah. Now, the um, opinions that I express tonight are just my own. However, it should be noted for the record that I uh, represent approximately uh, 10 or 15 uh, citizen opponents of both this project and the 53 Green Street project, uh, both in the planning board, in the ZBA, and in the Rockingham Superior Court. And I'm pretty sure that uh, if they were here, all here tonight, that they would agree with everything I'm about to say. Now, the central thread, the central theme of our opposition, of my opposition at least, is that uh, the pro this project is just too big. It's just too massive. It is completely, in my view, it is completely inconsistent with the character of the uh, historic district and the character of the setting in which these buildings would sit. You have two five-story buildings. Uh, at five stories, those buildings are going to dwarf all or most of the other buildings in that immediate area. Um, now, I and size matters, mass matters. Uh, I sometimes have got the impression of that in the past, uh, and I don't know whether I'm right, but it's been my impression that uh, some of the members of this board didn't even realize that uh, oversized building, again, just uh, excess mass, excess size is a ground for denying approval of a building. But it, uh, it certainly is a ground for disapproving a project. You wouldn't approve a building uh, the size of the Empire State Building in the middle of Market Square, even if that uh, building was a faithful, if oversized, reproduction of the old New Hampshire State House, which, by the way, did sit in the middle of Market Square in the middle in the 1700s and uh, early 1800s. Uh, this project doesn't even, uh, and uh, never mind the fact that this, uh, pro this project is going to uh, uh, be put in the middle of the wetlands buffer and is going to wreak havoc on the ecosystem of the North Mill Pond. Never mind the fact that it doesn't even have the re uh, redeeming feature of being affordable or workforce housing. These are, the plan is that these are going to be market rate, ap uh, market rate apartments. And, and, uh, uh, and of course, the hotel is, uh, is going to be purely for profit. Uh, in my judgment, these buildings will be an eyesore on the North Mill Pond. Uh, if you uh, want to move into architecture, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the buildings that are being proposed look more like a apartment building or a high school of the type you'd see in <coughs> Saugus, Massachusetts, or Lynn or Revere, Massachusetts, and not in historic Portsmouth. Uh, so for th uh, those reasons, uh, I think that this project is complete these, the proposal the proposed right. buildings are completely out of place, and I ask that they be disapproved. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ladies and gentlemen, Paige Trace, 27 Hancock Street. I was sitting down there with you when this whole project first came forward, and Carlos brought it a long way. But I'm here to say, every time I hear someone speak about the building, it's huge. It's big. And I've heard you all say that at various times. And maybe you've just seen it enough times 
that the huge and the big just keep coming at you like a ramming horn and you get to the point where you say, oh, it's okay that it's huge and it's big. The fact of the matter is that you were not required to follow the vision statement of the city or the, 19, or the 2025 master plan. You're not required, but we ask as regular normal citizens that our HDC and our counselor representative at least pay credence to the stipulations of the vision statement, which is 35 feet tall. 35. I assume that that's a heck of a lot more than 35 because it gets taller when it gets bigger. So every little bit, every time. Please, in my world, when I look at a piece of furniture, bigger, huge, denotes not so pretty, kind of awkward, maybe even ugly. Um, but big in mass is not what the North Mill Pond needs. It needs softening of corners. It needs adherence or at least acknowledgement of why you're actually adding an extra 20 feet onto a building when everybody acknowledges two and a half stories, 35 feet at most, next to the water. It's a stepping up of a plateau, and that's what's successful. And all of you holding the line and at least trying to make something big and huge attractive, I admire you all for your perseverance night after night. But Carly, you're better than big and huge. So I'm asking you, please, it's not, it's not housing. It's not workforce housing. There's nothing here but a hotel and mixed use that you could do something with hotel and mixed use. If you gave me workforce housing, I'd be a heck of a lot happier and you'd hear crickets, but it's not that. So I'm asking you, I know you deserve to make a profit, but we have to look at that odd infinitum forever. And I keep hearing big and huge. Thank you. Okay. Well, we've got a... Anybody else? <clears throat> Good evening, Esther Kennedy, forty one Pickering Ave. Um, you know, I have to ask. It's a lot to ask of one committee, and I did sit in your spot with a couple of you um, on the committee for a couple of years. And I have to ask, what do we see Portsmouth as? This isn't, it was so well, nicely said, this is what people enter into our city as. This building is going to be next to a neighborhood. And I agree with Paige Trace that if we were getting some kind of benefit subsidized housing in particular, we might be able to look a little over it, but it's big. There's nothing else, no more to say. And it really isn't very creative. I almost, if we're gonna go like this, I, I was kind of shocked that I haven't heard from Councilor Commissioner Rudick that it's in a new spot, you should get creative, you can be, um, I think the name, the new name for the newest addition to our town is called the barrel. You can add some stuff here. Um, you know, it is, if we're gonna do it at this point, go for it. Because we've kind of lost what our town is. And it is a village, it is a town, a small city. And there's a reason that we have a historical commission there's a reason why we're asking you all to take the time. Commissioner Adams brought up about the windows 
and the difference in the windows and, and adding a little culture to it. And I commend him and I commend his work that we see all over the town for years. And it shouldn't be pre-pooed, it should be celebrated. This building, I do not believe, is a representation of Portsmouth anymore. You're entering, it should be smaller, and it should be something that we want to look at for more than 30 years. I'm not sure we need another port walk, and that's what that is for, folks. Maybe a little bit more expensive port walk, but it's a port walk. What is our city? It's historical. We want to keep the historical, hence we have a historical commission. The question I have for you is how are you going to do it? We know this building right now is being built in a buffer zone, hence the reason um, we are fighting it. But take that out. This building should be a building that when people come to Portsmouth, they say, I'm in Portsmouth, I'm here to enjoy the history of Portsmouth, and it makes it a little different than Boston, or I'm here to enjoy the arts of Portsmouth. I'm not sure this building says that. So I'd encourage you to take a little more time. I would encourage you to um, um, really try to make it a make it special, make it different. Um, I have one more comment in general about this whole process. I was a little taken back to hear that a building got passed and then um, the old Getty station, and then it was said, well, we'll deal with what is gonna be the siding and what's gonna be the, the look in the afterwards, and we rushed it through. Um, and then, like tonight, we, we as citizens had no say on what that would be look like because it was put under administrative or it could be put under administrative passing. I hope buildings, we don't do that too, too often because I know a lot of citizens probably like to have a say of what it looks like. And I hope we don't do that to this building. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? No. Good evening, Rick Beckstead, 1395 Islington Street. Uh, I'm not gonna take more than a few moments of your time. I, I get it. I mean, most of that whole area of town is more modern, more newer. I suppose it needs some of that, but I'm still trying to figure out and wonder what happened to the charrettes that we had under Brian Wright, where many people that are in this room were actually a part of that. And where, what happened to the master plan? It actually is still up on the city docks where it actually shows and depicts this section of town as a two and a half story buildings, nothing more. And it was kind of broken up. I mean, I, I look at this and if we are gonna someday have a park there, something a little more inviting. I don't travel a whole lot, but some of those ones where you've got water and to be able to have an outdoor restaurant or something like that from the backside, something more of an element I think that is missing. Um, there's almost no place that you actually sit on the water itself to be able to go and have that kind of a meal. but. Two and a half story was nothing more. We spent a great deal of money and time. I spent, God, I think that went on for four or five days. It was held in the old uh, Portsmouth Herald building. Tony Corbiello was gracious enough to let the community go and use it. And I think we just, it was night after night after night. Uh, and he did a great job. What happened to that? The other thing that I really still disturbs me about is it's new, it's modern, it's the North End. It's, we got what we got. Now we have to work with what else is there but you still have to look across the street on the other side. I know some of those buildings aren't originally placed there. They were, they were put there on purpose. Those buildings need to be celebrated to be able to go and look at that across the street from buildings that are well over 200 years old that exist today, that people have put a great deal of time and money into, I think does a disjustice to those buildings itself into the city of Portsmouth. Modern, I get it. Two and a half story, nothing more. That was the intent. And you as a board are the ones that have that ability to go and say two and a half story. You need to stick with the master plan. More and more developers are using that and they come in with these drawings of these montages and they go off of it. They didn't do that here. 
you don't see any of that depiction, which still sits again on our city website that actually views that, that corridor that's there and complements it. it the, the vision was to step down by the water, to go up higher when you get away from the water. That would go and solve your problem of a wall on both sides. I'm still surprised that you're not going to have uh, the owner across the street, because this, this is certainly going to block his views. I mean, I'm sure he gets a great deal of money for those rents for the views that he has overlooking that end of town. It just, it, it's not right. It's not right. Please, um, please consider it. Um, it's got to be, it's got to be lower. It's got to be more traditional to the master plan that we put so much time and effort in. Thank you very much. Good evening, Petra Huda, 280 South Street. This area of town, I spent five years living over there. It's near and dear to my heart. I used to come into town almost every day and enjoy the view, the stepped up view to the steeple. In looking at what has become over there, the, the views of the water are gone. And as soon as you come around the corner, off where I used to live on Dennett, this is what you see in your face. Now, two and a half stories, like the rest of everything around there, is acceptable. The, the building into the buffer is unacceptable. And even for me now, even though I live on the other side of town, to come over there and see something that's already there, and then this added on top of it is, is, is depressing for me. Um, I moved to Portsmouth for the historic views and all the historic attributes that go with it. And I think the development in this area especially has gone the opposite way. So I urge you, as the people who guard our historic treasures, Please reconsider this for the rest of the residents in town. Thank you. Is there anybody online? Uh, yeah, Bill Downey. Go ahead, Bill. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll make this short since I'm pretty tired after a long night last night of elections, but uh, a couple things. Um, it's just too big, as everyone said so far, and it's numbingly dull. I mean, this has all the charm of a Rite Aid. And as Rick said, there's such a disservice to the neighborhood immediately across the street and to the community. So I cannot believe it's gotten this far. And what a disservice to a charming town to make it anywhere USA. That is all. All right. You want to mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, one more. Hi, I'm Douglas Allen. I'm a resident at 17 Sheaf Street here in uh, Portsmouth. And, uh, I moved here in 2018, 2017, something like that. And um, Portsmouth used to be a charming town. It used to be really charming. It used to be unique from any other place I'd ever seen. And um, I live at the end of what now is a behemoth of a building, which is the building uh, across from Ceres Bakery and Daniel Street. And it, it has engulfed the entire historic district with this monstrosity. To me, this is monstrosity part two, and it has no place in Portsmouth. That looks like it should, belongs in Boston. It's nondescript, it's non-interesting, it doesn't hold any uniqueness to it at all, and it's an eyesore, actually. And we already have an eyesore. We've got an enormous eyesore that we will never, ever escape from, and it has hidden the view of the church, it has hidden the view of all of the, it dwarfs all of the historic buildings around it, 
and this is part two. And I, after a while, what's going to be, why would anyone come to Portsmouth if it's just a reproduction of Boston on a smaller scale? What's the point? And this is just a continuation of that, and I just needed to get up and say that. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Um... Hi, my name is Abigail Gundell. I live at 229 Clinton Street. I live on the other end of the North Mill Pond, and I look down, and the little ha two and a half story, the two and a half story houses that have been mentioned by many speakers here, they look like monopoly houses now compared to the big, I don't know, the Heinemann building, I call it. This thing will do it. This, um, the uh, AC Hotel and the Foundry Garage, although that's a little more upstream, so. But um, my two points I just want to say are, just when I had to get up and walk around, I noticed really for the first time the little, um, the little recreation of the original New Hampshire State House. That's historic. This, so many elements of this piece come from 1950s architecture. That's not historic to me. Maybe it is if you're 30 years old, but it isn't to me. And um, the last thing I just want to say was I'd like to ask you guys all a question. Would you want to walk out of your front door or be sitting in your living rooms looking out a window at that building? That should be the, that should be the measure of every building that goes up in Portsmouth. Our cities would be a whole lot lovelier if everyone did that um, worldwide, not to mention citywide. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't, but I have a feeling that, that, uh, I don't know. I'll let you, I'll let it rest with that. <laughs> All right. So, I seeing nobody stand up, I'm going to close. Yeah, I'm going to close this uh, work session. And um, I don't see us moving into any public hearing. I don't know. Bill Downing has his hand up again. Let's just... uh, but I've closed. Well, let's, let's just ask. Him. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's I not. I can't unmute it. Okay. We'll keep going. He's muted. He had a chance. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Who are you saying go ahead to? No, you. <laughs> All right, so um, you understand that um, a lot of us feel that the hotel has gotten better and reached a certain point, come a long way, right? Mm -hmm. The mixed-use building, um, I think we all still have problems with. Mm -hmm. um, you've heard a lot of comments from the public uh, concerning the massing of this building. Um, whether you could consider taking off a penthouse or removing a floor, in other words, something like that would um, might <coughs> certainly help. I had that call for two weeks. <laughs> um, so, uh, and you've got our comments on, um, you'll be able to see the recording and such. Oh, um, yes. The other comments we have of the building whether it's softening, and softening it with mm -hmm. uh, some rounded corners or adding. So uh, at this point, um, I think that we need to have a continuance. Yeah. Yeah. December we'll, for now? Yeah, and we're probably, uh, it should still be a work session. Because <laughs> you might be, be coming back with a couple options for the mixed use. Mm. I would say at this point, maybe you would Let's just leave the hotel. Continue the public hearing, and then they can go back so, to the work session. Uh, okay. That's how it was advertised. Work session, All right. Public hearing, okay. Right? I understand yeah. that. Yeah. So we're going to continue it as a public hearing. With you can go into a work session in the future, but um, okay. mm -hmm. uh, all the work needs to be done on this building here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So can I have a motion? Motion to continue to right. December. To December. Okay. Seconded. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very lot. much. Thank you.
or a form for that. Are we still going? Does anybody need a break? Now we're. I can use a small. Bit. Sure, we got left. Huh? Yes. Yeah. What have we yes. got left? I guess. Oh boy. I guess there is a request for a quick break. Okay. Two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. So we're going to take a short break right now. We'll be back in five to ten.
Karen Leaf. She's a, a bugger. No, Mount Vernon? She That's said Mount, 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 Mount Vernon. Vernon. She, owns, she owns the house on South Street on the corner. Okay, we're going to get going again. Um, so we have a petition of Robin and Cyrus Noble owners for property located at 15 Mount Vernon Street, wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure, extend the roof line of the existing house over the attached garage. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 111 as lot 33 lies within general residence B and historic districts. Um, I would like to say at this point that um, about three years ago, approximately, we did give an approval for this project, but time ran out and um, we're looking, uh, because the, we're well over a year, we cannot just give an extension. See this for a minute. <clears throat> so it's uh, a, a new hearing. So who is here to present this hearing, or is there anyone? There should be. There should be somebody here. Yeah. <clears throat> so we continued it, right? Yeah, we continued really? it. Yeah. We continued we, it. So they didn't, yeah. Yeah. No, they didn't like show up last time. Yeah. they didn't show up last week. Last yeah. week. All right. It's December seventh, I guess. This <laughs> car. Uh. It's not. Yeah, but I don't think she's working for the current owners anymore. They changed owners. Um, move you want me to just ask to be sure? I think yeah. you're right, but if she is out there. It, sure. Okay. <clears throat> Technical difficulties. You all just talk amongst yourselves while we're. Entertain us, John. Yeah. We've got a couple jokes. Go ahead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please don't. All right, I move that we continue this to the December meeting. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? <clears throat> all right, so we've continued that one. So this is the petition of 553 and 559 Islington Street, LLC owner for property located at 553 Islington Street, wherein permission is requested to allow changes to a previously approved design, several exterior modifications. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 157 as lot three, lies within character district 4-L2 and the historic districts. And who is here to present this? Hi, my name is Tim Broshu with Audra Architecture, LLC. I'm the architect for the project. I also have the contractor, Larry Johnson, here with me if there's any questions that he can help answer. Um, so this was a, as you recall, we had, the, the project is, has been constructed. Um, the planning department came out and did their final review and identified a number of, of items that um, were non-conforming to the approved <coughs> HTC drawings. Um, we discussed this a bit at um, the last meeting and you had asked us to go back and um, look at these items, identify which items we could correct um, um, and which items you know, needed further discussion or needed formal approval from, uh, from this commission. So actually, Nick, if you can go to the page before this, uh, what I've done is I've taken, um, I, I've tried to group these items, there's 20 items, I've grouped them into a couple different categories. Uh, the first is items that the owner is going to correct. Um, the second group is items where we're requesting approval for what's built, um, where there were objections noted in the October 5th hearing from the board. So if you recall, we had some discussion and there were some items that, that seemed like they weren't going to be very controversial and some, some items that concerns were raised. So I've tried to put those up front um, that we can discuss. And then there were a handful of items where we did hear objections in that meeting. Um, obviously, you're welcome to, to comment on them further in this discussion, but um, hopefully we can run down through those um, a little more quickly. Um, and then finally, items that have been completed um, at the bottom here. So. I can, um, I was gonna go through them in this order. Um, I'm happy to switch it up sure. if that's easier for anyone else. 
So first of all, um, what, one thing I've done here, and I know how you, you can read it on the screen, but at the top I have um, grouped the, just the, the history of the discussions from what the original complaint was, what our original response was, uh, my summary of the comments from the last, um, from the October HTC meeting, and then um, any updates on that for, for the submission. So uh, the first item I had was um, about f f that we had full screens installed on the windows. Um, the owner is going to go ahead and replace the screens on the street facing windows with half screens. Um, they've actually already ordered them. Um, and so those ones we're going to, uh, we're going to replace. Um, and I guess, Where, how do you want me to go through this? Yeah. Does anyone? Do you want to comment on each item as we go through it, or do you want me to just, do a quick it seems summary? Seems like the owner correcting items, the owner to correct, don't need to be really <coughs> right. presented. Right. So okay. it's really about the approval requested, objections noted, and what your response is. Okay. So I'll go quickly through these ones that the owner is going to correct. Um, there was a note on the side addition with a piece of door trim where it was one solid piece that you wanted to see, we wanted to see a line between the door trim and the, and the corner board. Um, we have uh, cut a reveal into the, into the side of that um, trim piece. Um, okay, so the first item I had for, um, that there were objections to last time was the chimney, um, which if you recall, there were two chimneys in the center of the building. One of them, prior to the, this owner purchasing the building, one of them had been cut down to the ridge line and capped. Um, and when we got into the building, that chimney was in pretty bad shape, and so they, they pulled it down um, to the basement and removed what was left of that chimney. Um, there were some concerns noted about this in the last meeting. It sounded like we were, there was, we were close to a consensus that um, the commission might accept it, the removal of, of the chimney, but I wanted to um, keep this open for discussion if, um, if you wanted to discuss it. Why do each one? Yeah, I think we should do each one or we're going to get lost. Yeah. Yeah. Too All right, so we've got this chimney. So can I just ask if there was any discussion about creating a faux chimney now that you, since you took the old one off? And my, my concern is that it was a little asymmetrical once it was chopped off to begin with, but at least there was evidence that, that there were two original chimneys in the structure. And now that history has been erased. So was there any discussion of doing a bow chimney up the top, even if it's just replacing a short one? Um, I, I think when we originally presented it, we were presenting it just keeping that chimney as it was. Um, I don't think there was just a discussion from the commission about asking us to to is that what you're asking to extend the chimney? Well, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is that if if the agreement was that the chimney would remain at its six inch or eight inch level, whatever this is, and you found that not possible, and we were anticipating that a chimney would appear to be there, is one of the ways of resolving this issue for you to put one there, even if it is faux. Um, we, I guess to answer your question, we didn't discuss that, but again, that's we're open to discussions here. Is there a technical reason that you could not do that at this point? Um, when you say faux chimney, are you talking about essentially a, a frame with a wood, with a, with a brick veneer on it? Um, it's actually fairly common. Right, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure. I guess what I'd say, a full brick chimney, I think, would be difficult at this point. Yeah, no. But yeah. Yeah. framing with with a with a brick veneer, um, I think, is probably feasible. Okay. I'll just say, I I personally don't think that it's necessary on this building. It's a small stove chimney that is not, in my opinion, a character defining feature. It would have been great to see it there because it does still, like you say, document the history of what the heating system was. But it's not something that would really stand out as, as very important, in my opinion, for this building. I agree. And I, I think if you try and build a faux chimney, it's not going to match the original remaining chimney. And, and 
I'd rather efforts be put into other items. Yep. Okay. What do you feel, Dan? <clears throat> I I don't think it's important at this point. I'm not worried about the chimney. Okay. At this okay. Point. Okay. okay. Um, so let's move on. Okay. Uh, dormer windows. Um, the dormer windows. So there were um, two separate items related to the dormers. Um, one of them was um, looking at the trim at, on the dormer, and the other was the window profile. Um, the trim we have completed. Um, sure, we are. Uh, if you go, to, I think the next page down. Yeah, um, Nick, if you could zoom in to the bottom there. So we have now um, gone back and added the trim. You can see on the lower right photo, um, consistent with the um, original approved drawings. Uh, we had had this trim detail with these this kind of double curve, which reflects what's happening in the in the the portico down below uh, to some extent. Um, and so that item, which is a separate item, um, we think is completed. Um, the other issue here was the windows themselves. Originally, there were two um, single hung or double hung windows um, on either side of, with a trim piece in the middle. Um, that was taken out and replaced with a single uh, double uh, paired window. Um, the, there was one comment made in the last hearing about, um, about a stud pocket being removed. Um, the contractor afterwards um, mentioned that he didn't remember taking a stud out, and I actually found a photo here. It's probably hard to see there, but I found a photo of it. It looks like there actually wasn't a stud between those two windows, at least by the time we touched it. Um, so for <laughs> whatever that's worth. I think you're taking that a little too literal. I mean, <laughs> what, what I we are essentially saying is that there is a separation between uh, windows as opposed to being, you know, windows mold together, which is the modern way of doing it. But we frequently use that term, a stud pocket, just to describe some trim in between the windows. Yeah, okay. Tim, were these windows approved as square versus vertical? Um, they, they look awfully square. I think just because it took up the dimension of that of that trim. They're, they're the same height as really? what was there originally, the same height in the overall jam width, but I think because of the way um, they're molded together. Yeah, and I think part of this might be the perspective of the photo, but um, but they are the same the same height um, and overall width as those original <laughs> windows in there. Well. Um, okay, so we have the dormers. What is everyone general feeling here? So we can keep moving. I, I wanted to say I really appreciate the change to the trim work. Um, yes, it looks much nicer than it did before and so um and and not so weird and plunked on i mean i'm not really too worried about these windows because this is obviously a later addition um that you've tried to at least make more attractive and fit into the design of the building itself um i yeah it's a bad dormer from from the start, so um, I'm not happy about this one because it's such a prominent uh, piece on the building, but I can live with it. Okay. I appreciate you doing the, the um, detailed trim work on both the window, though, to match the portico. All right. So I guess um, we could move on. I think there's no major heartburns with 16. Okay. Thank you. Um, Salt box roof. Uh, the next item is the in the rear of the building, a, that little side it or the, the side um, original addition, the, the old part a, of the building. Do you have a page now. with a? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm on page seven. Ooh. Page numbers at the bottom. I think it's there. You go. Um, and so the original building in the back here um, had probably a series of small additions added to it um, with some roof lines that looked like they were had been reworked over the years to try to get the drainage to work better. Um, the drainage still wasn't working well, and so 
um, they removed that portion of the roof on the back of the building and replaced it with a, with a simple gable, as you can see down in the lower right um, photo. Um, so that was, that was the, I think that the concern at the last, uh, somebody raised a concern about just the history of, of these small additions onto the side building. Um, but otherwise, you know, we think this is the right thing to do for the roof on this, this back piece of the building. I remember that. David, what do you feel about this? This is for you. It's, for it's sure. on the back of the house. If, 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 if the rest of this is going to go together, then um, I don't see a great complaint over it. Uh, we certainly haven't lost anything. It is not an original feature to the building that's being hidden. It's just a, it's an unnecessary cleaning up that, that uh, I guess in general I don't think that I'm in much of support of. But I'm not going to hold those feet to the fire over a roof line. I think to me the point is that anybody else who's building and doing this sort of work in the historic district should understand that you don't just change this sort of thing and, and come back later because you've basically done something that's almost impossible to undo. Um, and, and that should just be understood that you, you, if you're going to continue to build in this part of town, please do not do this without coming back. Okay. Um, um, the next item, um, the rear portico design. Um, so this is again at the rear of the building uh, facing the, the, tra the train tracks. Uh, there was the original design we had for this rear portico on the approved drawings was more of a flat roof, somewhat similar to the, the portico on the front of the building. Um, at one point during the construction, they, they decided to make it a small gable. Um, I guess to get the drainage working and, and kind of reflect what they had done on the <coughs> this other side piece. Um, the committee was not, uh, didn't like the appearance of this last time around. Um, we have gone back and added some pilasters, which you can see in the top right photo um, at the building. Um, and then we're proposing a revised design um, for the, the, the gable end of this, of this portico. Um, if you go to the next page, Nick. Um, so we looked at a couple of, of other uh, buildings in the area that have a similar, there you go, that have a similar um, type of portico on the front of the building. And I'm just noting here some consistent things that we're seeing, which is um, kind of a, an extended uh, rake overhang um, with a, with a, a raking cornice, um, and, and then a cornice that comes across the, the face of it down at the gable end. And so we're proposing if you can go to the next page, please. <clears throat> uh, we're proposing adding some trim work to do to do something similar to that, where we're, um, you know, extending that rake out a little bit, um, extending a cornice across the bottom of this, um, and just trying to to uh, give it a little more detail um, on the, the face of that. And I have a I think the, the next page is just a detail of with some dimensions of some of that trim work, but. Um, you know, the contractor will need to work with what's there and what's built, but we've kind of made some assumptions about how to detail that. So, so I guess we're asking in, in this meeting if, if that type of design would be um, approved and would, would make this item acceptable. Okay. I, I can agree to that. I think that it's nicely detailed and it, the pilasters things do the improvements that uh, I think we're looking for, at least I'm looking for. This side? I think it's a good improvement. I appreciate the effort. Okay, so you've got your approval to do your proposed gable trim. Great, thank you. Okay. And you've already done the pile asters? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next item, now this is in the group of, of um, items where um, we didn't hear any objections in the last meeting, but obviously if, you know, let us know if, if there's anything else that raises a concern. Um, first is the windows on the main building. Um, these were originally six by six over six kind of vinyl replacement windows that we replaced with two over two windows to match the approved windows around the rest of the building. And in the last hearing it sounded like that was viewed as an improvement. Uh, 
Um, the it next says, item. Um, excuse me, HTC yep. preferred replacement of these windows, is that? Um, the, our, the original hearings that we had on this, yes. um, when we were discussing the windows, using these windows around the building, the owner at that time hadn't committed to replacing these front windows oh. on the building. Okay. And I, I, as I recall, you said, you know, it, it would be nice if you, if you could replace those. Um, and so during the course of construction, they decided to commit to that and just made them the same as the other windows around the building, which we believe are, are um, more historically accurate for the building. Okay. Um, this item, this is on the front of the building, there's a side porch and there's a door there that's set back about maybe 16 feet from the front of the building um, under the porch. Um, there was a comment that the door was changed to a nine light. This was the, actually the original door there that they that they didn't replace. Um, so they've painted it now and painted the screen door. Um, so we, again, we're keeping that existing nine light instead of the, I think we had a two light door that was shown in the drawings. All right. So you kept the original, the door that was there. Yes. That's fine. Um, the next item, ground level deck railing submitted. Um, you can kind of see in the picture on the left, that there had along that porch that we just talked about, there had been a fence um, that separated off the back, the back area. In remo removing the fence, we thought we were gonna need to add a railing, but we realized that we only had about 17 inches of height there. And so we, we left the railing off and just left it as an open side of that porch. No objections. No objections over here. <clears throat> We're flying right along. Let's <laughs> hope. Um, the next item, uh, the basement window. This is on the side of the building. There was a, a basement window opening that had been boarded up. Um, at one point, a discussion with the building inspector. Um, I think they were directed to just to just brick it in uh, because it's so close to the ground there. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay, in the rear of the building, um, window above the portico moved further up. Um, I think on our original drawings, we had these windows aligned with the window on the side, that little side um, back building piece. Um, there are different floor heights in those two parts of the building. And so we had raised, they raised these up um, to get a little more sill height off of the floor and the interior of the building in that part. Okay. Uh, next item, deck emitted. This is again in the rear of the building um, on the little, that little side addition we just talked about with the gable. Um, originally there, we had a bulkhead going in between, between the two stairs there. You can see in the plan on the top left. Um, during, shortly after we got into construction, we relocated that bulkhead to the other side, which we got approved through um, a, a site plan approval, um, but didn't come back to HTC. But because of that, we were able to simplify the deck here. The reason that deck was laid out the way it was, was just to get out of the door and turn the corner and get down the stairs to the parking <coughs> lot without running into the bulkhead. So we've now just simplified that to just a single uh, step and a landing up into that building. I'm seeing a lot of nodding on that. Mm -hmm. I hope we're not falling asleep. <laughs> <that we're good. laughs> Keep going. Yes, sir. Um, portico door change to nine light. Um, this is the rear, again, that rear portico at the rear of the building. This was before we put the pilasters back in. Um, but this was actually, I think, in the report, this might have gotten confused with that other door on the side porch. Um, this is actually a, a new... Uh, four light door that we put in, um, which you know we think reflects the, the look of the windows um, of the two over two windows on the building. So, oh, I guess that's all right. So it's some kind of a uh, the next item. There were three um, items related to on the third floor, on the side of the building. Um, there were three items related to this this small deck that's up there. One is that the deck was reduced in size. You can see the lower right, um, the original deck, the railing was kind of bumping into that, that um, eave return. We pulled the deck in a little bit so that it, it sat inside those eave returns. 
Um, and so we reduce the size a little bit because it, it you know, seemed to be a better detail there. Um, the deck door changed to a four light. Again, that's a similar door to the one we've put down on the, on the back of the building. Um, just for context there, I think the original drawing showed a, a two light door. And this, again, is a, is a four, half glass four light door. Okay. Um, and then the last item here was a small window next to the door, which you can see in that, well, the last one is, is a little small window next to that door that wasn't original that we thought was more appropriate to remove. So a window remove. Everybody um, understand? Okay. Uh, the remaining items are ones that we believe we've, we've satisfactorily completed. One is a wrought iron fence. We talked about last time, it seemed like people were happy with that. Um, the next one is the dormer trim, which we talked about. Again, there were separate issues, items for the window and the, um, and the trim on the dormer. Um, so we did add that trim at that, that third floor dormer. Um, the next one was the, that side deck on the third floor. Um, there was a note about the, another note here about the size of the deck, which I think I addressed already. And then there was a note about the column. Um, the approved drawings noted that the column, uh, that the new column up on the third floor deck would match the column down below, the existing column on the porch down below. And then the discussion in the last meeting, we talked about um, adding an astragal, you know, banding um, around it below the, the capital um, to give it a little more detail. And so that's what you can see down there on the, on the lower right that we've now gone in and added back in. And we did that on some of the other columns around the, the back portico as well. It's a good thing to do. Um, so uh, on 19, the second floor columns are not lining up. Is that, um, and, and there's really no way of correcting that, is that correct? The, the column alignment, um, um, I think they basically they, they located a column where they had structural support below. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what that's referring to. Um, it, I think that had to do with the, again, the size of the deck, which, which we changed. Could it be the way it was either. drawn also? What's that? Could it be the way that it was drawn on the? Uh, um, on yeah, the I'm not sure if, if it's talking about looking at it from the front, alignment left to right, or looking at it from the side, you know, where that's located relative to the size of the deck. So. At any rate, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's bearing where it needs to bear on the structure below. Okay. And I think it's more or less where there was a, a deck support there previously, even though it wasn't much of a deck. So we've gone through the list. Does anybody else have anything to say? The list. Um, and I think it's been said that hoping in the future when you're in Portsmouth that <laughs> you keep an eye on the what's going on. Um, so if it pleases the board, I have a motion. Ask public public. Oh, I'm very sorry. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak to these changes on Islington Street? Page Trace 27 Hancock Street. The parts of a puzzle which you've also graciously listened to tonight, one after the other after the other, 19 or 20 of them did I count finally? You've been wonderful. And each and every one of them are little and tiny. And you've been really gracious as a board to accept each little point but it's like water dripping it's like me showing up at the podium every time that it goes on and on and on the fact of the matter is gentlemen yes you were nice enough to to take care of what the building department found but the fact of the matter is the ladies and gentlemen of this commission come here every two weeks and they are quasi-judicial. They are important to this city. 
And when the chair spoke and said, please pay attention to what we tell you to do. And when Commissioner Deering said the same thing. The fact of the matter is they donate their time to every person in this room every two weeks to see that Portsmouth maintains the historic integrity that it should. And they decide if it should be modern. And to sit there and say, oh, uh, well, if we make the mistake today, it's okay. We'll just go back and say we're sorry. You know, it's easier to make the mistake and say we're sorry. That shows no respect at the point that you build it. Now, that doesn't make me very popular, but I'm here to say tonight, these people volunteer their time. <clears throat> And they deserve the respect that each and every one of us has given them when we stand before you all, as I st stood before this board 13, 14 years ago. And so it, it bothers me to see you all so graciously say, we can forgive this, we can forgive that. I agree with you, but I remember this project because the windows suddenly weren't long enough or tall enough. And everybody went ballistic because we suddenly said, oh my God, the windows went in and on purpose they weren't the right size. So I'm saying for anyone out there considering erring first and finding forgiveness later, please don't, ladies and gentlemen. It takes their valuable time just like I am tonight. Don't do it. Respect this board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just say clapping um, isn't part of the process here. I know the mayor's asked that we don't clap on controversial issues. Um, so clapping isn't respecting these chambers or respecting this board. Thank you. Okay. Esther Kennedy, 41 Pickering Ave. And I just want to support those commissioners that um, want to make sure the people ask ahead of time. Um, you know, I have a neighbor who did not follow protocol and ended up putting his fist through a window when the ACC was visiting. I think probably one of you remember the scene. Um, and because he was asked to re do things appropriately. He's still my neighbor across the water and he did do it and fixed it and people moved on. So there have been other people in the past that have been asked to take care of things. So I would just kind of appreciate, I appreciate those people who have spoken up and I would say I support you, but I would hope that other people do not follow suit. Again, we're fighting to keep our historical um, neighborhoods. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, since no one else is speaking, I'm going to close this. Let me, let me check just to be sure. Yeah, we have to look online. Okay. Nobody has their hand up. All right. I'm going to close this public hearing. And uh, I look for a motion. Um, we do have a list of. Uh, the improvements and the changes and the things that we're willing to accept. So um, if we could just have a motion. Well, to move that we approve um, this application as presented, I don't think we had any issues with anything or stipulations, did we? No, correct. Um, correct. Okay. No stipulation. Seconded. Um, all those in favor say my, my, my findings of fact. fact. Oh, on findings of fact. I'm sorry. Um, uh, all, oh, I, again, these are minor issues. Yes, it's out of step of how we normally do things, and we did address this at past meetings. So thank you for the support. But um, we covered all of that. And all of these, I think we've worked together to make sure that everything maintain, uh, complements and enhances the architectural and historic character of the building. Um, 
and has compatibility of design with the surrounding properties. All right. Um, okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? So um, you have your approval for those changes to your original proposal. Now, putting things away here, that's not right. Ah, here it is. Okay. So this is work <coughs> session's new business. Work session requested by 95 Daniel Street LLC owner for property located at 95-99 Daniel Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the demolition of the existing structures on both lots and the new construction of two new multifamily structures as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on Assessor Map 107 as lot 6-7 lies within Character District 4 and Historic Districts. So who is here to speak on this? I yeah, mean, we're going to go down to our work session. session. All right, so we're going to. Does Mark want to be? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Getting settled. Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. We can hear you, Mark. Perfect. Very strange indeed. Okay, why don't you introduce yourself and we'll just get going. Mind the microphones. Yeah, mind that. Yeah. You're passing out paper. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So my name is Richard Dejarin. Um I'm here with Sean Peters, the property owner, as well as my boss, Mark Janini, who is currently on Zoom, who will be leading the presentation. Um, we work for McHenry Architecture as the architects for this project. So if Mark can speak, go ahead. Yeah, yeah terrific. Thank you very much for the introduction, Richard. Uh, sorry, I couldn't be there tonight. Um, I had uh, prior plans before the agenda came out. Um, so tonight we're here for you know, 95 and 99 Daniel Street. Um, in your packet in front of you, we've got some uh, existing conditions as well as uh, some schematic design, some uh, contextual study that we did uh, regarding the neighborhood and the proposed structure or designs that we have, as well as a structural assessment by Gorham Structural that was completed as part of this. Um, for the, as far as the building history, uh, 95 Daniel Street is a Carpenter Gothic building, uh, which was built approximately around 1850. Uh, this was owned by the Russo family. Uh, we had written in here about 1965, but apparently it was uh, much before that. Uh, John so might have uh, acquired the building from his family about that time. Thing 99 Daniel Street. Um, again, the Portsmouth Advocates, as well as the uh, tax assessment card, shows the building approximately at the age of 1850. Um, as you'll see once we get into further into the presentation here, um, that particular building doesn't show up on this lot until about 1920. Um, we did have a site walk uh, with the, the committee last week, and as part of that walk, um, it was noted that the building might have been moved to the property. So it has a, it was built uh, much earlier and then moved to the property about uh, 1920. The general project um, we're here to discuss with you tonight is the removal of, the, of both these structures at 95 and 99 Daniel Street. And then we're proposing uh, two Federalist townhouses that would be joined on the, uh, the, conjoint, the lot line since this is two, currently two lots. 
And then as we go through the presentation, we'll note some of the reasons for the demolition, you know, some of the site constraints, which will trigger code requirements that might, you know, have adverse effects to, uh, to keeping the structures, as well as uh, the structural, <laughs> some of the structural deficiencies that are um, noted in the, in the uh, assessments, uh, some of that due to def deferred maintenance and some of it age. If we could go to page two in the presentation, uh, one back. This should be a site plan. We don't seem to have that sheet. Yeah, there should be a sheet that shows the site plan. Um, I can pass well, uh, if you, maybe if you go, uh, we'll, we'll skip over that now for the moment and come back to it. Uh, and start with just the existing building photographs. So uh, on the upper, and just we'll hit these briefly, but in the upper left-hand corner there, you've got the Daniel Street view of both buildings. Um, uh, the the Russo uh, building on the on the right will refer to it as um, is a you know a carpenter Gothic style house uh, with those uh, Gothic windows on the front, which is again is repeated on uh, one another time on the side. The storefront was added obviously sometime um, later in the building, obviously not original. Same with the porch on the eastern side, the left side in this photo. That was originally just a covered porch that was infilled at some point, um, and siding has also been changed. Uh, we haven't looked; to, we haven't tested it to see if it's like an asbestos type siding, but it is like a manufactured clapboard type. Um, and then uh, left of that 99 is you know kind of an unusual um, form as far as the the building looks. You know, there is a, a main gable. Uh, that kind of goes up and down the lot with this perpendicular gable on the front that uh, is a little bit taller than the rest of the building uh, in the front porch entry there. Uh, uh, the middle upper photo there, you kind of see how close the buildings are. On the left is, uh, again, 95. Um, and this is, right now, this is the stair, stair tower you know, between the floors. Uh, right now, this is leaning about uh, four inches out of plumb. And the floor itself on the second floor is also a couple inches out of plumb. Um, again, this is due to, uh, based on the, the structural evaluation, the potentially a rotten sill or even no real foundation under that part that was uh, appears to be an addition based on when we were inside um, the building looking above the ceilings in there, you can see that the original kind of main gable uh, perpendicular to Daniel Street uh, there's you know, the existing shingles up there. Uh, so whenever they added that perpendicular gable there, they basically left the shingles on and framed over it. Um, the upper right, upper uh, right hand photo, this shows the 99 property and its proximity to what I'll call the Colby's building adjacent there. Uh, that bump out that you'll see there um, would show up on the site plan, but we don't seem to have that. This is basically that entire perpendicular structure there is over the property line. Uh, so that's ranges between two and a half and three feet. It's over the property line onto the Colby's building uh, property. So that is one of the site constraints um, that, that those properties have. Uh, just quickly, the lower left-hand uh, picture there, you can see the kind of couple of additions that have been put on the, the rear of the Russo building. Again, that shows up in the uh, middle photo and, and really on the uh, bottom left-hand photo. Uh, if we go to the next page, A2, this is just to help kind of uh, confirm and, and, and show how that the uh, 99 building, you know, was not, didn't show up on the 1887 or the 1910 Sanborn maps. So it was really there in 1920 is the first time that we see it. and. At that time, that entire lot was, um, it was a single lot with the, I'll call the Colby's building. Um, so those were joined, or that was added to, to a single lot at the time. And again, uh, 1980 single barn map there. So uh, Mark, uh, respectfully, I see what the next yes. page is. And um, yeah. so respectfully, I think 
that it's time that we discussed uh, these, the removal of these buildings. Um, so, and I just can I just make a couple more comments since we didn't have the site plan. We don't have the site plan, but we passed it around. We passed it around. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, if I could just comment a couple other things um, on the removal before you start on that. You know, some of the other site constraints that we have really are the proximity of the buildings to the existing uh, property lines. They're in almost all cases under three feet, which, you know, require um, modifying the existing walls, roof overhangs, so that they're you know, non combustible materials, fire rated, as well as um, either modifying or reducing the number of existing okay. openings. So those are just some of the things that, you know, we've been looking at here. So if you want to discuss the, the demo part. Um, you have to demolish the buildings before you can build a new construction. And uh, existing conditions um, of the buildings, um, it's nice for us to know. And we are, I assume we'll have some comments about the inside of the building. Um, but whether or not you have three foot side uh, setbacks or whatever, it's, uh, I mean, there's something in real estate called caveat emptor. I don't know if you've heard that. It's buyer beware. And it's, uh, it's, you know, it's real. So who wants to start off the discussion of these buildings? Yes, Martin. Well, <clears throat> I've been on the board for five years and get a lot of criticism from the public about how this board is is allowing developers to cut out the historic fabric of the city um in those five years i don't think we've lost any historic fabric usually it's empty lots or or something that's fairly modern that's being taken down to to accommodate a new development or, you know, it's just something that was built in the last 20 years. This would be the first time that someone has proposed removing real historic fabric to develop a lot. And so I cannot support that. Uh, and I'm sure everyone else will tell you well, I'll let them speak for themselves, but this is historic fabric. I mean, even your own page two just lays it out. Pre-Civil War. So I'll let others speak. Reagan, let's go around. Sure. Um, yeah, this is a hard sell. <laughs> um, but, and, uh, you know, you've got two two buildings uh, obviously on a very challenging site um, I'm glad that you um, included the structural reports for each one because and thank you also for having us go through the site visit and being able to walk through it's really helpful even though we don't really have much to say about the interior of the building um, but it's it's helpful to be there and experience it and see it and Yes, they're old. Yes, they have structural deficiencies, but they still have their character. Um, they, you know, in a lot of ways, this is a major part of the makeup of our historic district. Um, you have two wooden structures here. One was moved, but the other one, you know, was built amongst a lot of the brick buildings, sort of after the Brick Act sort of faded away and so it's one of the few these are some of the few brick I mean uh, non brick structures that we have in our downtown that are historic um, and one of the few that this you know that we call carpenter gothic is is pretty rare for our collection of buildings um, it really represents something that we don't have a lot of um, so again you know you've got some structural challenges here it's part of the building being in the neighbor's property line is um, I don't know how you deal with that but um, you know 
they need a lot of work, but I can't support tearing them down um, and certainly not replacing them with a larger brick building that's totally, even though it sort of has some of the historic character of the surrounding properties, it doesn't reflect what's here now. And, um, you know, so I would, I, if you're going to replace, if, if these have to come down, I would want to see very similar things in size and scale and form to what's there now. Um, but it's going to be a, a big hurdle for me to be able to accept the demolition of these buildings. <clears throat> this picture is Daniel Street, and Daniel Street's a unique street, and we know it's across the street, but that section represents some great history. It was the way the city developed, and I hate to see it disappear into row houses from Boston or Philly or something completely modern along a unique, unique street. I don't think there's anything I can really add um, in support of not taking these buildings down that hasn't already been expressed. Um, I think the point that Dan is making about the variety that even in just this one block of Daniel Street, um, to lose that would be a big shame. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, it's just too special a thing, I think. Um, it's, I've, I've been wondering what it was going to be like for 30 years, wondering what was going to happen when this day came. Um, it seems pretty simple. I don't see it. Rich. Yeah, that, um, there's so much history here. I don't see it. would be very hard to convince me that they have to tear these down. Um, they'd have the report doesn't say they need to be torn down. It says there are some deficiencies. Um, but again, this is this is the historic fabric of downtown Portsmouth. This is why we have a historic district commission. Um, I will not support the, the removal of these buildings. Yeah, and I would make that unanimous. Um, I think the challenge that you're going to have is with 99, and um, obviously you have to do structural work to it first. But um, I, I might add that uh, we've looked at um, the Captain uh, Thompson House on Pleasant Street, 149, I think. 179. 179, and the, the one that is uh, putting slate on the roof. And um, the inside of that, in spite of being a mansion and looking, uh, you know, from a distance like this is a, just a really fine house, the inside of that house was so dry rotted. Uh, I think that they've ended up replacing everything on the first floor. And um, sills, joists, posts, everything. Um, so that's what happens. And so I think that um, that's what you're looking at here. And certainly 99 with you know better windows and such could be, uh, it would certainly uh, fit in a bit better than those 1950 editions, but um, I think we ha have a unanimous board, so it's really up to you to uh, figure out wh how you're going to use these buildings, you know, what you're going to do to them. Next door, just next door, quite recently this board um, reviewed an application, I'm sure you know, um, of yeah. Emilio's building. Nope. <laughs> yeah. um, no these idea. guys are the ones. Yeah, no idea. And, uh, <laughs> and and in the process of doing that, an awful lot of extra effort beyond just a simple construction project is being put into that building to keep it the way that it is. It seems like there's a, at least a potential for that kind of commitment of preserving eclectic pieces of our architecture, our streetscapes. And, and to say, just because I, I think it's charming, the proposal that you brought, uh, but I don't, see the, I don't see how it makes sense. Yeah. Yes, and I guess what, from what I'm hearing, I mean, the whole our, I guess part of our reason for providing the two design options was to show more than, you know, the traditional uh, steps in the H, you know, that the HTC has of just showing a, a, um, a massing, white massing box. So we wanted to show you at least something 
um, you know, a couple options of what might go there um, in replacement. But it sounds like you, at least at this point, you're not interested in reviewing those options at this point. That's correct. Yeah. There's no option that includes the demolition of those buildings. It's unanimous. So, kind of a conversation stopper, isn't it? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we might mention I was not on the board at the time that one, so 100 or 110 State Street that's now the school, the, the preschool. That building, at least from the outside, looked like it had major structural deficiencies, sagging roof, and all that sort of stuff. And look at it now. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful from the front. You would barely know that anything had happened to it. And, and it's a thriving business. And it's a small. And very small. Small and, wood and building. And it appears to be doing very well. So I, I think that there are examples in the city of. Um, wonderful reuse and rehabilitation of, of a building of this type. And to my knowledge, the only other Gothic we've got in the historic district is Nancy Emerson's house on Islington Street next to the bread box, the purple one. Mm, yes. Can you say that address one more time? I don't remember the number. She's to the left of the bread box on Islington purple. Street. Oh, I'm sorry. It's purple. The first, oh, the first address um, you mentioned, somewhere on State Street. I just looked it up. 100. Oh. Yeah. 100 states. Where Chapel hits <laughs> state. Oh, okay. <clears throat> mm, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> I think that we uh, we could open this up to the public and and, and um, essentially continue this to uh, another meeting. So, if anybody in the public would like to speak on this. John Evans and the daughter of this property. I speak only uh, to item 95 or address 95, the barber shop. It's not only historic, it's also distinctive. How many carpenter gothic buildings do you know in downtown Portsmouth? I don't know of any. Now there's one on Islington way down, uh, it's probably in the 700 blocks, but it's, it's a quite different kind of Carpenter Gothic. And this has a simplicity and also a kind of elegance to it in its simplicity. Um, you start down this road, have we forgotten the North End completely? Um, I don't have any more, anything more to say. I don't think there is anything more to say. Thank you. Right. Anybody else? I'm Richard Candy, Vice President of the Portsmouth Historical Society, and I agree with the board that these two properties should, in fact, be rehabilitated, put back to use, but they are iconic buildings of Portsmouth, especially 95. I mean, if you want to, to recognize and memorialize American conservatism in the 20th century, <laughs> there's John's Barbershop. <laughs> yeah. You think people are going to let you tear that down? Yeah. You better think of another thought. That is never going to happen in Portsmouth. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Anybody else like to speak? Good evening again. Rick Beck's at 1395 Isenden Street. Uh, I, I guess I would, I would just basically say to the new owners, um, you've taken on a building um, that is part of Portsmouth, a building that is over 100 years old. Uh, I would, I would express to the new owners to take advantage of what you have, celebrate it, restore a very unique and rare set of buildings that tell a story of Portsmouth. I have had the honor of restoring a couple of buildings. This board actually was a part of that in the Driscoll House that was over a meeting house. 
Um, I actually had um, Dave Adams take a look at the building when we were in demolition phase and looked at some of the uniqueness in there and said, that's an awful lot of money to go into a building like that, but it was worth it. I had a client that literally spent an obscene amount of money and I spent the better half of a year and a half restoring that building to probably one of the most prominent buildings in the south end of town. I know I'm gonna brag about it because I did it. <laughs> but because of that, I actually was honored by being contacted to go and restore literally a 1740 farmhouse in Kensington, which I've now been the better part of a year. I am now, because of that building and restoring it and rejoicing and celebrating it, have two other projects that have come forward. Actually, this evening was given a phone call by somebody that was moving here and just recently bought one in the historic district in Portsmouth, and I am gonna have the unique pleasure in about a year to actually restore an old house on the North Mill Pond. This is what Portsmouth is. I'm so glad to be a part of it. I would love to express any ideas or interest that the new owners would like to go and have with it. I could give you some views on it, things that board members like and what they don't like. I seem to know a little bit about some of the board uh, and its character and what is required. Um, celebrate it. Don't knock it down. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Karen Buffard, 79 <laughs> Daniel Street. I just want to speak to the process because I think you all have really said what I wanted to hear, which is you're going to protect the, the historic houses in the district. But I, I just want to say that it was important to see the reports on it, but everything that you showed basically was evident through a casual observation. And to go ahead and buy it and then expect to do something so dramatic is really sort of shocking uh, for someone who really appreciates the historic buildings. And um, I, I do hope that you can learn to appreciate what you have and enhance it and never think about tearing those buildings down. Thank you. Okay. Hi, once again, Duncan McCallum, 536 State Street. Um, uh, I think that this board gets it, so I don't think it's necessary for me to spend a lot of time here. Uh, these, uh, the two buildings, and especially, of course, the uh, John's Bar Russo's Barbershop, are, as one of you, one of you put it, uh, the historical fabric of Portsmouth. For those of us who knew John Russo, that building is practically like a shrine. Uh, he cut my hair for 25 years, and as I'm sure you all well know, uh, it, it was more than just haircuts that you got when you got when that you got when you went to John's Barber Shop. There was the sign atop of. Uh, top of the wall that said, uh, you know, free parking for Republicans, Democrats, vehicles will be towed, and like, uh, like comments like that, he was, a, he was a character, he was the hub of political, political conversation, uh, and for that reason, among uh, other reasons that uh, you yourselves have all mentioned, I don't think that that building should be touched. Thank you. All right. I never thought I'd tell Page Trace, 27 Hancock Street. I never thought I'd tell this tale out of school so publicly. My husband is a staunch Democrat. <laughs> there you have it. I am an independent. The fact of the matter is John Russo cut my husband's hair since the day we moved to Portsmouth. He, like everyone else, adored going to that building, in part because of the architecture. He was scared to death of John Russo. And he was even more fearful that John would find out that he was a Democrat and not a Republican. <laughs> um, the fact of the matter is, we also came to this town because of a house. And if you think those two buildings are bad, there are a few people around this table that could tell you exactly how bad the house was when we bought it. We had back foundation caving in, there was a foot of water in the basement, and I regularly had young people tell me that as even younger people, they'd hunt frogs in the basement. <laughs> so two years later, we restored a great house. 
And I'm hoping that you guys can see the same thing with those structures. They're not exactly maybe what you wanted. They're maybe a little small for your purposes. But the fact of the matter is they're part of Portsmouth. The fact of the matter is Mr. McNabb was able to put his building where it is today, as much as some people love it and some people don't, because it was a parking lot. This is not a parking lot. This is John's Barber. And please don't tell my husband I gave away the story about John. Thank you. See that. All righty. Petra Huda, 280 South Street. Built in 1850 on the National Historic Register. Please save this. Just say no. Thank you to all of you for your opinion. Thank you. Esther Kennedy, 41 Pickering Ave. The reason we came tonight was because of this building, and I want to thank the board for their decision. Alrighty. So, I think we've heard everybody from the public. And let me check online. Oh, there it is. Yep. No one's got their hand up. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to. Uh, close this work session and um, look for what would you like uh, in general continuance or are you realistically going to be ready in three weeks with something else <laughs> it'll probably be a little longer yeah. so why, yeah. why don't we continue to january sure yeah, that would be that. ideal yeah, yeah. unless mark motion? has another so moved. suggestion and seconded okay all those in favor all right Aye. Okay, against. So uh, you have your continuance till January. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, Thank, yeah. Thank you very much. Don't, don't adjourn yet. Yeah. <laughs> don't adjourn yet. <laughs> we have a couple things. We have some issues. <coughs> uh, so um, some of us tried to do a site walk this afternoon, not having gotten the message. Um, but we couldn't help but notice that even with our flashlights, we really couldn't see anything. So um, Nick asked me to raise the general issue of... Well, remind me. Or remind you, excuse me. I said, to remind... Okay, Nick, you're reminded. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I, I think a couple questions about Marcy Street, because I wasn't here when you guys reviewed that. And I, I think you wanted to go to the site in that particular case to look at the siding request made by the applicant for the Hardy, not just in the uh, side yard, but maybe on the whole building. I'm not exactly sure, but it was a siding inspection uh, <coughs> as to why you asked for a site visit. So that's question one. Do we really need to do that? And if we do need to do it, could we do it individually, given the house is right on the street? Uh, so we, because we have a daylight savings problem now, and is it really worth having a weekend meeting just to get us together for 15 minutes to look at the exterior of that building. I, I'm thinking not, but that's question one. Question two is going to be what, what are we going to do for site visits for the next six months that we don't have enough light? What's the preference of the, of the board or the commission uh, in respect to time of day, day of week? And we need to think about that when we're deciding whether we really need one versus just individually doing a drive-by, which most of the time works, right? Unless we're needing to go inside like we did at 95. Right. Most of these can work. Like the 40 <coughs> Pleasant Street was canceled. So I have, I have a third question. I haven't answered any of the first two yet because I haven't stopped talking. But <laughs> yeah. 40 Pleasant Street was on the agenda because we asked them, uh, you guys asked them, to show a full mock-up of the lights from the top to the bottom, not the whole building, but something that would be representative of what they're asking for, because they only had that one light, which isn't even the size of the light they're going to use. So today they were asked, hey, are you, are you guys ready? Uh, and they said, we, we're ready, we think, but we haven't heard from our distributor that he's going to show up with the lights, but we're not going to put any at the top, so it'll only be a partial. Uh -huh. So my recommendation at 2 o'clock or whatever when he got back to me was not to do it. Till we have, we need 
in my mind, we need to see all three lights in order to really see what's going to happen. And just interrupt, yeah, but that ahead. actually we'd like to do in the dark. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That actually so that work. could be done at six o'clock. So I'm, I'm. They're, they're going to do that for December. So just before the meeting, yeah, would we'll be just go at six o'clock, and mm -hmm. it's five minutes. So. Drive by, walk by. But yeah. I'll set it up for six so everybody can be there, so they can hit a switch. Because I, I don't know what they're doing, and we can ask them. And there might be something missing, and we, you know, whatever. It'll take five minutes, but that one's easy because it's a, yeah. as Dave said, a night meeting. Yeah. See, I prefer, like, I prefer something like that, six thirty. I mean, six. my own personal thing is. I have to eat dinner. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, being perfectly honest, I, I have a blood sugar problem. If I don't eat dinner, I don't know what I'll turn into. <laughs> so essentially, um, you know, six o'clock is just, I mean, I go, I drive back, and then I drive back here again. I, I just don't. Well, six o'clock works if you have to be here at 620. Yeah, six o'clock works if you live yeah. in the South End. Oh. Well, no. you wouldn't be going home from 6 to 6.20, right? I probably wouldn't, yeah. so I'd have to eat at 5. But that's only for the night ones. We, don't have, we don't have daylight know, after uh, Just to get this over with, I mean, I can, you know, I was, that's what I was going to do tonight is eat. You know, matter of fact, I did eat tonight at 4.30, which is weird. <laughs> um, I would also like to say that, that the fact that you called and this guy goes, well, we're really not ready which means that we could have gone to 40 Pleasant Street and they wouldn't have been ready. That's disturbing. And, um, you know, the Marcy Street thing, yeah. Um, I mean, we can just look at it individually. Yeah. 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 So that, so let's go to the, that, I think that's the answer to the first two, right? They, they got to get the lights set up right. We'll go at six o'clock. Right. And we'll set that up and let you know. The other one, you can go look at yourself. Yeah. Um, I don't think the owner's going to have any wisdom to give you uh, that he can't do when he's here. Actually, the problem with the Martha Street is the contractor. Okay. So then we'll just be cognizant moving forward for any any future site visits in the next five months. And I think it's really time that I remind us. Uh, actually, I, I'm not sure if we've even had any identification oh, in a long time. I mean, I've got my badge. You've got a new one. Yeah. 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 I think okay. the important thing as long as uh, as long as the um, applicants are made aware, I mean when I do a drive by I I try not to intrude on the property yeah. because they That's never know time. exactly when we're coming. But I think when somebody uh, when we request a site visit and the applicant says yes, that they expect that we will actually intrude on the property. I mean not yeah. in, in the house, but that we will be walking all the way around it, we'll have our IDs with us. Yeah. But that's different than us just driving by. Agreed. You know, casually Agreed. with us. But yeah. we all must, you know, I mean, remember, realize is that we have the right to do it. It's, it's yes. in the yeah. ordinance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As soon as they make out that ordinance. application yeah. to the Historic District Commission, we as members have a right also. I was denied access in, Le in Lexington, Massachusetts, because it turns out there that, that you don't have a right. I was uh, hired by the. Well, HTC. I'd encourage you to knock on the door. Yeah, yeah I, anyway. And that's oh, that, yeah. that's a, a good Someone protocol. like Martin might live there, and you'll be in trouble. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm um, back in the old days. We used to have site walks on Saturdays. Yeah, we used yeah, to all the time. Work and whatnot. Yeah. To, at the moment, I, I think it's charming to have the conversation. I don't give a damn. I'm a retired guy. Yeah, no, me too. I, I get I'm just asking. I, I, and it's not like we've never had darkness. In no. the afternoons before our meetings before anyway so no. I, I don't remember exactly what we've done in the past but i think that we if it's i think we have done some well, weekends i think we've done yeah. we've scheduled a weekend and if that works great and right. not then some we you go just on do your own. case by case yeah. I, I will tell you that 172 pleasant street uh, which we went in looking david and i and and uh, everyone else didn't get the, the notice or something notice. like that it was kind of dangerous, really. you know. We had we were walking around that building, and and it was dark, you know. And sure. the, the ground is not even and stuff. The the other thing that I would like to say is we've had a number of times where we just appointed one or two people, and then you can give a report. 
Yeah, I remember that you appointed me to go look at the church. Sure. Um, and windows. We've done yeah, that. all of those windows in that building. I, mean, I wasn't here for Marcy. That's why I'm a little uh, yeah. in the dark on yeah. why we wanted that. Mm -hmm. okay. Could there be a um, notification via text for these last minute? Like, Did I'm you get one? I, no. Text. It was email. No, text. it's emails. I think it was email. Yeah. I, I sent a text out. Yeah. Well, well you sent one to me. I didn't. To accept. Maybe Dan, did you get it? I didn't get no, a text. I was, no. What the hell? No, none of them bounced back. I don't know. I don't think I ever gave you a text. Well, you got an email, and then I, I texted no. everybody individually. Mm -hmm. No, the only. Uh, you didn't get it either. No. You Dave might, Adams did. You might have okay. my landline on there, which I. Oh. Can't you can't text and I never answer well, it anyway. Would, yeah. Somebody's bounced back and said it was a landline, but I saw text from you in the whatever well the so, only thing that you know i got from you is take it easy for a bit see you oh no i did. karen got it and got back to me yeah. dan's Do i guess. go case by case basis yeah, yeah that's what it was okay. case by all right case. I'll, I'll make sure i get, get your cell phone we, we, we need a thread we'll get a text you got a text we need a thread there's no way you did whatever it wasn't a group text Oh. Okay. Okay. All right. No. All right. Any other yes, we got a couple. Nobody's things. criticizing. Can we answer them then? It's good feedback. Hey, let's. Margo has one more thing, and oh. then I've got to get a vote out of you on the CLG application because oh. I want to get it to the okay. city council. So okay. let's. Margo, you want to go next? Yeah. So I, I just said um, while we're like officially still running, the people yeah. at 249 Pleasant Street. I just wanted to give them a big thumbs up because that house is really looking fantastic, um, and then. I, I wanted to float the idea of um, setting aside some time if we get a slow month to do a review of some of the bigger infill projects that we've done over the past couple of years, ones that have been approved and actually have been completed, and to take a look at how are they doing, were they successful, what could we possibly yeah, learn more. from them, um, particularly maybe in the way of the use of new materials, things that were haven't been Yep. You know, how does that really turn out, and should we, we should, should we be more specific about how people install these new materials now that we see what they actually look like? So I just wanted to float that idea for Something consideration. I think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. That's great. The North End, Brick okay. Market, you know, it's, it's a lot to look Islington at. Islington Street. Yeah. The end of State Street, which is 10 years old, but it's worth looking at. Islington yeah. Commons. Yep. Yep. <coughs> okay. Can, can okay. I throw an issue on the table? I'm sorry. I'm no, go ahead. 30 seconds. There were some comments from the public. Yeah. They get thrown out. We eat them. Then we, they're just hanging out there. Is there a point that maybe we could address some of these comments? Or have the applicant no, addressed these comments? Other than how you did it? No. I don't think. I don't Other think. than how you did it in the subsequent application? I mean, I, I think I heard a response to some of the public comments in your response to the applicant for the demolition. No. No, I'm I'm talking about the Rains Avenue. Some yeah. of the comments made there. Yes. Um, you might let the applicant address some of those. Uh, we might address yeah. some of those. And some sometimes we do before you close. There is sometimes they especially people Carla. Like, people like to. She frequently respond. will will um, come back. Well, I can't I can't imagine in that case that the applicant and his representative weren't fully cognizant of everything that was said and yeah. were, were semi shell shocked and didn't have anything to respond to at that point that I hadn't already be said. I don't want to speak for her, but I, I think I, I think if they wanted to say something as a response to the public comment they would have, they would have said something. So number one here. number one I did say uh, at the end that, you know, you've got uh, a number of opinions from us and you heard the public uh, on the massing of the building. So I did say that. So that kind of, you know, brought it all together. And, and the other thing is, is no, I don't want to refute people giving comments. I, I don't, we don't need to have arguments. I'll just say we brought this up to the city council with public comment yeah. and we're afraid of getting in caught in a discussion. Um, the mayor, the chair, has taken some points to clarify some point, you know, if there was some misunderstanding or a point was made that was inaccurate, um, especially if it's something I saw in that the master plan and our rules and our, bio, you know, something like that, yeah. then they would clarify. Um, other than that, yeah. It might be more trouble than it's worth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have to be careful. 
All right. Yes. So <clears throat> last month I gave you a draft application of the certified local government application for Portsmouth mm -hmm. that needs to go through the city council before it can go into the state. <clears throat> um, obviously, this helps promote historic preservation in the city, especially outside the district. And it makes us eligible for some dedicated funding for uh, CLG communities that we current, can't currently get to. It'll help us with public buildings, Seibolt cottages, middle school, anything that's historically significant. Uh, it'll help us with the cemeteries, which desperately need funding that, that we have care and custody of. I'm sure there's other resources. We can do survey work. We can do we can do preservation planning uh, grants through this program. So it opens up opportunities for us to do more. I don't see any sticks uh, to go with those carrots. The sticks are all the setup of having a heritage commission or an HDC, and we've got it all. So this was pretty easy to put together, just uh, grabbing all our information. Yeah, I'll say as a professional, having done a lot of work that's through the CLG program and grants and things like that. Um, the only restriction really is just having oversight to make sure that you're doing what's in the grant and making sure that Correct. that product and what you're trying to do is appropriate and helpful, but they, the state gets money every year from the National Park Service to dedicate to preservation, and sometimes the state is asking the towns that have this CLG, um, that, are, that are a certified local government, hey, you got any projects you want? Because we've got money right. and we need to give it out. <laughs> and so I'm happy to say yes, Portsmouth should and have a, some. And I'd say the only the only potential stick to that is that there is a there's a requirement, at least a written requirement, that you guys be qualified to be on a commission. We've already got qualifications for that, but that the city actively train and staff the Historic District Commission. And training is something we could all use, mm -hmm. but training requires some funding. So the city council might have to raise and appropriate a little bit of money each year. Road so, trip. So you folks can go on a, a you know a workshop, right? So that's a good thing. Yeah. I'd say so, any, any opportunity for more funding is appreciated. Yeah, outside funding. So yeah. if we could get a, a vote of support from the commission, that's going to help the, the council, I imagine, Realize the importance Let's of this. Have a motion then. I'd move to support the application to the CLG. The application mm -hmm. to the CLG. And second. Oh, hundred and some pages. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Again, thank you. I have to yeah. abstain. Thank, thank you. Nick. I got help no from others too. Yeah, but I have good. to abstain. I haven't read it. So. Oh. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Nick, thank you for taking the. Oh, Finally, right? All of that <laughs> You've been good. asking for years. Yeah. But so, you did sorry. it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, adjournment. Here. So, yeah. <laughs> Here. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.